Welcome to the Terrible Podcast with your host from SteelersDepot.com, where you can find all your latest and greatest Steelers news. It's Dave Bryan and Alex Kazora, always lit, talking Steelers. And now, here's Dave and Alex. Welcome to the Terrible Podcast, Season 11, Episode 43. He's Dave Bryan. I'm Alex Kazora, SteelersDepot.com. Thanks for being back with us, Steelers Nation, on this Friday as the Steelers get ready for their Week 10 game against the Cincinnati Bengals. Dave, did you know the Steelers ran a Wildcat in the Super Bowl the against the pick- Cardinals? Uh, ran a Wildcat <laughs> in, the, in, uh, in, in the Super Bowl against the Cardinals? What? Yeah, did you know that? I didn't realize that. I was, I was watching the Super Bowl last night. Oh, wait. And uh, they ran Wildcat with with uh, Willie Parker. I'm trying to remember the play. I should. At least they did it once. It was on a first and ten. I don't know how many times they did I didn't watch the whole game. But yeah. sent you with the random question on a Friday. Keep you on your toes. <laughs> there you go. Uh, been, it's been a little while since I went back and watched that game. About time for that to happen again. Yeah, I fell down the YouTube rabbit hole of Ben Streetball plays. And there was the one third down to Heath where he ran around and just down. Welcome to the Terrible Podcast. Hold All on, right, hold on a minute here. Let's. Uh, I had some audio click in there. All right, uh, you good? Yeah, I think we're good. All right, let's pick things back up here with the pure right now for the Pittsburgh Steelers. They released their Thursday injury report yesterday afternoon, getting ready for the Bengals game, and there was, as usual, some good news, some bad news with these guys. Mike Hilton was full on Wednesday with that shoulder, which made me feel like, okay, he's 100% going to go against the Bengals. Good to have Hilton back after missing three games, but then Thursday, he was limited. Uh, Isaiah Bugs uh, went from did not, did not practice on Wednesday with that ankle to limited, so he'll probably play Tyson Alu-Alu limited two straight days with that knee, that MCL injury, and of course, we saw Anthony McFarland uh, did not practice on Thursday with an illness. We know what that could potentially mean in this COVID climate. No guarantee. We do not know for sure, but that's what happened to Vance last week. So Hilton McFarland, two big names to watch for Friday's final injury report. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, uh, obviously all eyes will be on what happens with Ben Roethlisberger here and, and the other three players on, on you know, uh, on the COVID list. Uh, obviously total of five if you include McDonald. And he's not going to play. So, uh, you know, so far so good, right? You know, but all, all it takes is one positive test. Uh, obviously they've been, you know, separated uh, from, from, from the rest of the team right now and, you know, you you would you would think and hope that uh, they they would be in the clear by now. And uh, uh, Jay Glazer reported yesterday, and, and obviously the, I, I think both Mike Tomlin and, and Randy Feetner have commented on, on it as well too. That as long as everybody uh, uh, you know does it, you know, as long as they clear the COVID testing and all like that, uh, they'll be available for the Saturday walkthrough. Fortunately, the Steelers play at home uh, uh, this weekend, so that means they're you know not having to use Saturday as a travel day, so they can. Uh, in, in, in turn, you know, spend a little bit, probably extra time at the walkthrough. And I think that's kind of the plan is to make the walkthrough a little bit longer than, 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 than what it would normally be uh, to give some of the guys, especially on the offensive side of the ball, uh, some, 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 you know, time to make up maybe whatever they missed during the week there. And, you know, Roethlisberger doesn't practice on Wednesday uh, generally, but he is out there. Now they've, they've had the kind of the remote meetings and all those seem to be going well, according to, uh, to Randy Feetner and all. Uh, look, I, I don't think there's a real reason uh, to be concerned here, you know, as we sit here, especially with with Roethlisberger. However, comma, if 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 things are sluggish, you know, if he plays and and if things don't go uh, well offensively, I know that's probably going to be one of the things that that you know, members of the media and other people probably kind of point to as well. You know, he he didn't get to practice this past week, but uh, uh, barring anything unforeseen. Uh, I would expect those those four players on the, on the COVID list to play, and then it just comes down to you know what's going to happen with those other guys on, on the injury report, kind of the more questionable ones. And by that, I would mean kind of Mike Hilton and Tyson Alu Alu would seem to be those two guys right now. Yeah, which way are you leaning? Uh, obviously, Hilton went in the wrong direction yesterday. We don't know if there was a reaggravation or if that was planned or what. And Alu Alu limited two straight days. Where do you think those guys end up for game day? Uh, I would, I would guess that, uh, maybe I would lean more likely to them not playing, you know, uh, um, middle of the week, uh, you know, uh, going the wrong direction on a Thursday, 
obviously isn't good. Uh, with, with with Mike Kelton and, and, and all Tyson Alu-Alu has been is limited right now. And I think all he's missed is one game, right? Alu-Alu? Well, mm-hmm. one, one and almost a full, you know, when he got injured. Uh, I, I I would lean to both of them not playing. But, but it wouldn't surprise me if both of them ended up questionable when the injury report comes out later today. Obviously, Friday is going to be a big day. But you would think as much time as Mike Kelton has missed right now, if he's not full, uh, on, on a Thursday, that would probably not be a good sign. And then with Tyson Alu Alu, probably th- th- their 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 view is, uh, you know, let, let's not rush him. You know, mm-hmm. he's only missed one game. So I would lean to the probability of both those players, Hilton and Alu Alu, not playing. But stranger things have happened. Yeah, that's where I'm at right now. Obviously, if Hilton were to go full on Friday, I mean, Isaiah Bugs went from what did not practice to full on, on Friday. So who knows what's going on uh, sometimes with the injury designations and, and, and the plans. My guess, and this is obviously just a guess, Hilton will be questionable. Alu Alu will be doubtful. And uh, Hilton will truly be a game time decision. I really wonder what in the world his injury was. It's going to cause him to potentially miss four straight games. Obviously, it's a, it's a shoulder. He took that big hit trying to tackle Kareem Hunt. But I just wonder what the specific nature was that caused him to miss a month of action potentially uh who's that mike hilton what oh, that shoulder injury yeah, I mean, look i mean he was Operation. in he was, yeah he was in some pain you know <laughs> when he For came sure. off that field uh, people said what well, didn't look too bad uh, yeah you know i don't know how you can judge it by that you know but uh uh uh, you know, Dr. Mel, I think, is, is kind of surprised maybe that he's not back yet, but maybe he had some sort of setback, too. That That's one thing that we don't know. You know, maybe, maybe he kind of got banged around in a practice and, and had some, some sort of a setback. Mm-hmm. So it's it's hard to say with these things you know uh you know we we see what we see on tape and then you know we don't you know there, there's a lot we don't see so uh yeah, I, I don't know. You you would kind of hope, though, that sooner rather than later he'd be back because he's already missed three games right now. Uh, this wouldn't be his fourth. And, yeah, you, you kind of wonder what, what what's going on there at, at this point. Now, uh, you had a guy like Sean Day. Is, is it a labrum? You know, maybe more a little bit more severe? I don't know. But, uh, I don't know. We'll, we'll keep our fingers crossed. Stranger things have happened. We've seen players coming back from injury go go the wrong way on a on a Thursday in the past and then wind up playing so right. you know, we're just we're just playing a guessing game here yeah that was bug scenario last week uh, Derek Watt with that hamstring he's been full both days we'll just have to hope it holds up throughout the week because obviously he was fine during the work week last week it flared up before the game against the Cowboys and then Watt uh, was ultimately inactive McFarlane with an illness fingers crossed for him um, obviously that's an alarming situation potentially and with the guys on COVID right now Ben and Vince and um, the others, Hawkins, Samuels, obviously, as you said, Vance will not play. Um, speaking of Ben, and obviously he misses the whole week of practice, I wonder what those guys do during actual practice. Do they, like, Skype into the practice itself and get to watch, do you think? I mean, they probably get sent to film, I'm sure, at the very least. But I'm just curious. I know they're in meetings virtually, and, and that's obvious. But I wonder if they actually attend practice virtually, so to speak. Yeah, that's a good question. I <laughs> That's a great question. I mean, uh, I, I don't. I obviously don't know the answer to that. I mean, it's something that 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 Randy Feetner and, and and Mike Tomlin would be able to be asked. I I you would. Think that they I would, would watch Skype in. I, I would think that they would just get it after the fact and then go over it in, yeah. in, in a meeting session. My my first inclination is to say that they're not watching it live. I think it was a benefit to watching it live because usually on the coach's tape, there's no audio. And so you like the audio. You can hear calls. You can hear audibles and just hear communication, which I think is beneficial that you're not going to get likely on coach's tape. Okay. Well, my, my first inclination, when you, as soon as you asked that, my first uh, mm-hmm. thought would be no. But I don't know. I mean, that, that would be something for uh, uh, obviously a great question for Mike Tomlin and, and the coordinators or, or really the players, someone like Ben too. So uh yeah, interesting. Haven't thought about that. And and obviously, you know, there's been stories about Ben playing with basically zero practice reps before the Browns game where he came in relief of Landry Jones who got injured and throws for like 200 plus yards. And uh, Arthur Motes told the story of the 2015, I believe it was the AFC championship. What was it? Yeah, it was AFC title game against Denver in 2015, correct? The one for the Pitts do sought fumble game. That was AFC title, correct? Uh, that was divisional, right? Is that divisional? Okay, maybe it was divisional. Yeah, regardless, Arthur Moe told the story of, because obviously Ben got hurt in the Bengals game before and or hurt that shoulder, and, 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 and Moe said that uh, Ben didn't throw a pass 
all week of practice. During the walkthrough Saturdays, he's throwing passes left-handed. And then he comes out there Sunday, and they almost win that game. So, obviously, you want you would prefer Ben to have practice reps. That's ideal for any player. But uh, this would not be a new situation for Ben to play without really any practice reps. Yeah, th- 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 this is the kind of thing where it's not going to be a story unless it's a story. <laughs> unless, yeah, unless he plays poorly, then. <laughs> right? I mean, right. Uh, if they come out there and, and they only put up 17 points or something like that, and God forbid they lose or whatnot, then it's going to, th- th- then that's the story. Uh, but if they don't, then it's, oh, ho, ho hum. You know that, mm-hmm. that that that's just been so. It's I mean it's, it's gonna be a, it's gonna be one of those results biased things, right? I mean, sure. Uh, I I have feel personally. I I mean from from what he's done in the past and, and to hear Randy talk and hear hear the virtual uh, 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 meetings that they're at. Look, I mean he's got it more in the favor than, than probably ever before with all you know being used to more of these virtual meetings this year. So I guess if there was a time to to to, uh, to kind of miss, it would be now. And uh, on top of that, this, this is a guy that "quote unquote" injured both knees against the uh, against the Cowboys, so probably did him a little bit good to sit back and put his feet up for a little bit, you know. Yeah. Uh, sure. On top of it, there. But uh, once again, this is not going to be a story unless it's a story, and I know that's kind of kind of uh, oh yeah yeah no duh Dave but I mean really that that's where we're at with this because there's been no 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 issues really that that, that, that come to mind in the past uh, of, of 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 you know playing extremely poorly at, after missing a, a you know some time in practice or, or a whole week in practice real quick before we flip to the Bengals injury report what about Hawkins and Samuels do you think they dress Tomlin obviously made the reference to the young guys not having practice affects them differently the way it would Ben and Vince what, what do you think their status is going to be I I wouldn't see any reason why they wouldn't uh I mean look uh uh the, <laughs> they don't change up too terribly much in with the run game I mean they, they have what you know they run at what they run Mm-hmm. You know, uh, so yeah, you, you're probably missing some, uh, some scheme up type of reps against maybe a certain front or something like that, but, uh, perhaps some minutia. Yeah. Some minutia. But, uh, other than that, I, I wouldn't, those guys are experienced and, and know how to pr- uh, prepare for games. So, uh, right. I, I would be surprised if both those guys are cleared and, and, and they didn't dress. Also, just because of a lack of alternative options, I guess for Edmonds, you could uh, for Samuels, you could put in Trey Edmonds. But um, I think they're going to need Hawkins. They're probably going to play Hawkins a good bit this week against the Bengals four three front. So yeah, I yeah, think he's active. that that makes sense. And and if they didn't do anything at the running back, it would be finally to uh, well. Here, here's the thing. Oh, one thing we forgot to cover was uh, Anthony McFarland on the injury report. Uh, no, we mentioned that. Oh, the, we did. Both. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's just hard to speculate exactly what's going on with him, obviously. Yeah, you see illness, though, and, and, sure. and, and yeah. Happen advance. Uh, uh, you would think, though, by right, and it obviously could, could take a couple of days because I think it took a couple of days from, from Vance McDonald to go from illness to a positive test. So uh, if, if, if such a thing was going to come about, then it would be tomorrow tomorrow right saturday uh be be a couple of days after the original illness on the injury report there so and then the question go, uh, begs to be asked uh, uh will will McFarland dress being a rookie and missing a, a day of practice you know mm-hmm. i mean he probably would if he misses just one day but obviously the the concern is yeah could he potentially test positive for covid and vance went friday he missed last Friday with an illness and then tested positive on the Sunday morning test that were received Sunday night or Monday morning. So if you follow that timeline, McFarland's test on Saturday would be the most critical. But again, there's no guarantee. I mean, the incubation period can vary. So not saying he has it. We don't know. But obviously, that's what happened with Vance last week. And we saw the outcome there, unfortunately. All right. Well, let's uh, let's let's play the game of the inactive list here. Uh, uh, first and foremost, oh, I'm sorry, that's my phone. Let me turn it off. Uh, let's play the game with, 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 with the inactive list here. Uh, do we, do we expect radar to be, act, who, do we expect anybody to be activated from, uh, uh, from the practice squad? Um, I'm not thinking so unless these COVID guys don't get cleared. All right. Assuming there is not an activation, uh, uh, or an elevation, I should say from, from, from the practice squad, uh, who are your inactives then? Assume, uh, assuming all of your COVID guys play. Sure, sure. I, I'd have to 
it's become such a game with this. It's well, there, like there be, be five, right? I mean, yeah. if there's no elevation and, and if all your guys are cleared, uh, I'm going to say, well, obviously Dobbs, right? I, Dobbs I don't think all is going to play. So I want to put him down for the injury side of things. Hilton is a true toss up. I don't know if you want to put him on the list or not. Yeah. Let's, let's put him on a list. All right. So we have, three. we have more reason to put him on the list and not put him on the list. Mm hmm. Uh, obviously, Carlos Davis should get a hat again because if Alualu is going to miss, um, do, do you need Derwin Gray? Probably you don't not. Need right? Him. No, you don't need need him. Um, but then with Hawkins, again, he's going to be cleared. I mean, I guess you trust Hawkins with with very little reps. Yeah, you could probably put Gray on the inactive list. All right, then 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 who's the fifth one? Because it's not it's probably not gonna be Gentry if somebody I mean, no no way it's Gentry period, even if there's probably an elevation, right? Right, right. He'll he'll be active for the first time this year. So yeah, I mean obviously McFarland and his status we'll have to check on. Right. Um other than that, um, It would probably be a running back, right? I mean, do you need to dress all those running backs? Yeah, so Trey Edmonds or Samuels. Right. And and okay. And, uh, well, the thing is, McFarland doesn't give you anything on special teams, you know? Yeah, well, I don't know. If, he, if he's cleared medically, then I think he'll play, because he's been doing that most of, most of the year, most of the last couple of weeks, I should say. So, All right, so we'll if, then, then, uh, then at, and assuming Watt, uh, Derek Watt dresses, maybe it forces Edmonds back, back out, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah, just a, a placeholder running back. One of the three, Samuels, okay. Edmonds, or McFarland, probably becomes that last and active. But if Hilton is active, then there's another spot that's got to be down and a cornerback. I, I, I have a no. funny feeling they're going to they're going to elevate Radar. I just, and then just, just, and just then dress him, and then dress him, and then that would put uh, another odd man out, and I, I'm not not quite sure who it would be. Yeah, is it worth it? Because are you, is it worth a trade off of Raider, a third tight end, when you haven't used a third tight end all season? It, I'm, I mean, not, Hawkins, I'm not convinced he wouldn't be the second, but <laughs> okay. yeah, I mean, he's, he's the better blocker, at least from what I've seen. I haven't seen Gentry this year, but I mean, you got kind of a questionable Watt anyway, not, not knowing, yeah. you know, how that's going to be. Do you really want Watt uh, being a core special teamer? I mean, I, I guess if he's healthy, he's healthy. Uh, yeah. Raider is a, probably a better special teams player than, 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 than Gentry. He's, I think he's a better blocker, although we haven't seen Gentry. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, it's, it's quite the indictment, I think, on Gentry so far this season. I know, yeah, you can only dress so many players and all like that, but the fact that he's uh, – uh, hadn't been able to get a helmet in some of these situations, uh, even though you've had two tight ends healthy and all, I, I, I think it's a bit of an indictment on him. So uh, if I'm looking to run a lot of tight, possible two tight end sets, and you, you yourself even said, you know, look, uh, Hawkins, you're probably going to use him a little bit more either as a second tight end or as a third, you know, as as a, as a uh, end of the line extra, you know, third tight end essentially, then I, I want my best blockers in there. And I think Radar is that over Gentry. Let's just end it at this. I you know, We obviously don't know which way it's going to go. We'll, we'll have a better idea on Saturday because that's when they usually announce their L Elevations there. If if Radar is elevated, he's dressing. Period. Sure. Yeah. Uh, second, if Radar uh, dresses and Gentry doesn't, well, I don't. I you know that that's uh, that that's quite an indictment there. Yeah, I'm not going to indict Gentry until we see what happens this week. If he doesn't get dressed at all, then that's obviously a huge blow to where they think he's at, and it puts into question why he's on the roster in the first place. Right. 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 And the Ravens are working out your boy Luke Wilson, which I'm sure burns you up. Yeah, I mean, I'm not. I mean, it's just he, you know, he's just a name. But I mean, I, if you if you were gonna do, and they I, they probably wouldn't have been able to have him anyway this week, you know. Right, so, right. Uh, uh, I mean, he's just a name. He just got can help out on special teams a little bit better blocker than probably what they have on the roster on top <laughs> of it. But uh, speaking of players that won't be able to play the Bengals did claim uh, former Falcons edge rusher Tack McKinley he will not be able to play this weekend but on their injury report uh, it looks like not practicing on Thursday was cornerback McKin McKenzie Alexander with an illness defensive tackle Geno Atkins uh, right tackle Bobby Hart running back Joe Mixon and cornerback Darius Phillips I don't know the situation as closely as maybe you do, Dave. Obviously, Mixon does not feel like he's going to play, miss another game with that foot injury. It seems like Atkins actually might miss this game, and so that would be 
Um, he's not played well this year, but he's been a, a long-standing member of the Steelers-Bengals rivalry. So yeah, and, and trying to read between the lines of some of the, their, their beat reporters on Mixon, it, it sure doesn't sound like Mixon's going to make it back this week. Kind of working on the side and uh, not, not really doing much of anything. I suppose there's a chance that, that he does go, but uh, it, it certainly doesn't, doesn't sound like that. Atkins is kind of curious as well, too, with him. And, uh, yeah, but McKenzie Alexander, I mean, really, I mean, I, I – I, I I don't I'm hoping Bobby Hart plays. <laughs> I'm Bring hoping, it on. Yeah, I'm hoping Bobby Hart uh, has a good turnaround here. Uh, look, they're in trouble right now on their offensive line. There, there's no two ways about it. Uh, uh, you know, uh, Jonah Williams is on the injury report, but I think he's going to obviously go. Uh, they had uh, Quentin Spain, I think, over there at left guard, right? Uh, Mm-hmm. Uh, and they it, just signed two weeks ago, right? Who they just signed, and and uh, you know he can't be looking forward to having to go against Cameron Hayward uh, in that game. Uh, who's going to play right tackle for him? If Fred Johnson's on the on the COVID list, right? Mm-hmm. They got that Kansas kid, Akeem, whose name I can't pronounce. I think he might be the right tackle. Yeah, uh, they they better work on getting that ball out of out of Joe Burrow's hands quick. That that's all I got to say. And and even if Bobby Hart plays now, uh, we'll see. But uh, we we saw uh, last year that that TJ Watt wore Bobby uh, Bobby Hart like a hat. Uh, I you know that's going to happen again. It's going to happen regardless of who plays over there. That's why their game the the Bengals game plan they uh, probably does not consider. They might consider punting on third and long. Uh, uh, because uh, of the fact that you just don't. One of the things that shows up on tape on Joe Burrow is on on on, on schedule downs. Is he, he tends to get the ball out quick in, in some of these RPO situations. But what also shows up on tape on third and long situations is he'll burp the baby a little bit, and when he does, that's when he gets in trouble there. And that's the last thing that they 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 want him doing is holding the football with T.J. Watt and Bud Dupree and and, and those guys coming against him. He's taking a lot of sacks already. This uh the, the this season as well too <clears throat> too so yeah uh giovanni <clears throat> oh, well, let, me, let me jump in here real quick and just and just bounce off of the point yeah burr has been sacked 28 times this season second most of any quarterback in football only behind carson wentz in that line while it looks a little different is not really much better than last year and we saw what the Bengals or what the steelers did to the Bengals last year in some of those games i mean they had what six or seven sacks i think the one mm. Primetime game. I mean, they just right. teed off Michael Jordan getting destroyed by Hayward. And I don't think Jordan's playing for him right now. But again, this line has not significantly really improved. Uh, they uh, back back to the injuries real quick. I mean, uh, and, and Mixon, I like the way they use Giovanni Bernard. That they're you using Giovanni Bernard the way Giovanni Bernard should have been used his entire career mm-hmm. uh, in, 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 in Cincinnati there. Even but that said, he's not an every down back, you know. Uh, I, I don't think, I mean, uh, he's a guy that you, uh, obviously you're probably going to put out there in some third down situations and, and, and in run game situations, but I, I don't think you go into the game thinking, boy, if we can only get uh, Giovanni Bernard 25 touches in this game. You know, uh, Mixon's obviously the more explosive back, the guy that can definitely get the edge and make things happen uh, uh, there. But Bernard does have have some some nice runs, albeit this year and all. But uh, it, it, this is a running game of theirs that's struggling anyway, regardless of who's in there, especially with that offensive line right now. So not having Mixon is just one other thing that that's going to be handicapped uh, uh, this Bengals offense. But with that. Look, we went into this game last week thinking, uh, all right, all we got to do is shut down uh, 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 Ezekiel Elliott in that running game. We'll f- focus all of our efforts on that. Well, how did that work out for you? You know, mm-hmm. uh, so I, I until this team, the Steelers defense gets back to stopping the run again, which they should on Sunday, then we're going to have to question whether or not they can. You know, obviously two games in a row, uh, the Baltimore game, you kind of, maybe felt like that was one that, that could that maybe get away with you. But look, mm-hmm. uh, Joe Burrow will take, take, take off with the football at times, but he's no, he's no Garrett Gilbert. <laughs> oh my goodness. He's that no, he's no Lamar Jackson, you know, mm-hmm. uh, 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 when it comes to that. So, uh, uh, long story short, this is a Bengals offense. that's going to be hampered by injuries this week. 
Yeah, for sure. And so we'll check out the reports on Friday, see the final statuses for the Steelers and the Bengals, and have that a little bit later on the site on Steelers Depot. Dave, our favorite part of the week, listening to Coordinator's Corner with Randy Feetner and Keith Butler speaking to the media was Randy Feetner. Even interesting answer, he was asked about James Washington and kind of his reduced role playing about, what, 10, 15 snaps each of the last two weeks, not playing as much in that four-receiver set. This team has gone to in the second half of the Ravens and Cowboys wins. And um, and Fiener's answer basically was that James is too smart to play, basically, saying, um, I'm trying to find the exact quote here. I, quote, I felt in talking to, uh, with Coach Ike Hilliard, also that James is probably a sharper guy to be able to handle the role. When you get in that group, you only have X amount of those players. Somebody has to be, uh, be able to handle every position if someone goes down. That, quite honestly, just felt to James because I would trust and still have a lot of trust that he would be able to fill in if Eric Ebron was down or fit in if Juju went down. So Feetner saying that Washington is just a super backup in those situations. I don't know why he couldn't move around if he was already on the field in, that, in those situations and just plug somebody, someone else in. But um, that is Feetner's answer for why Washington's snap count has been reduced. Yeah, that's like me putting you off to the side and saying, well, you know, <laughs> he's too smart for this podcast. <laughs> you know, uh, they, they, that don't, that one and one don't equal the two there. Uh, you got to come up with a better answer than that. Basically, uh, what he's saying is he's not, uh, you know, uh, he's, too, he's too versatile. Yeah. He, uh, he knows too much. Yeah. that and, and that's not what it is. You know, uh, it's just, there's other players that, 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 that give the, uh, give them the better ability, especially when they go into the four wide receivers, uh, uh, situations, if they have to move people around, mix and match. Put put certain guys in this. Basically, what he's telling us, I think, is James Washington can't can't play in a slot. <laughs> right, and and that's why I think the actual answer is is just that obviously right. Claypool's getting plays uh, reps over him at the Z, and Ray Ray's a better fit in the slot, and that and that makes sense. So I'm not mad at that. I just thought the answer. I mean, I guess it's probably some kernel of truth to it, maybe, but it just felt like the old. Uh, my girlfriend goes to a different school. You guys don't know her. She's in Canada. <laughs> kind of thing. That yeah, have just, you used that? <laughs> I played the fifth on that. Maybe maybe once or twice here. It's it's been quarantine's been rough, but um, yeah. My uh, girlfriend just, just goes to a different school, but what? But, but uh, she's in Canada. Uh, you guys don't know. her. <laughs> you don't so. know her. Yeah, she, yeah she's yeah, a model. Worry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. But, uh, uh, yeah, just, just a bit of a weird answer there. But hopefully Washington – I mean, it, it, there's ebbs and flows to it. And, and Washington probably will end up playing more snaps in one particular game this year. And obviously he's still been productive. I mean, the, the touchdown against uh, Dallas on that sluggo. So, I mean, he's still finding a way to make an impact even on reduced snaps. Yeah, look, I mean, uh, uh, does, does James Washington probably know all the positions? He should. Uh, he's a smart kid. I, uh, You know – but is he a guy that you want out there in the X position uh, a lot? No. Uh, is he a guy that you want out there in the slot position a lot? No. Uh, he's a Z receiver. I mean, that's 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 what he is uh, uh, predominantly, and you know, he's not. Unfortunately, he's, he's he's not a guy that's going to to really stretch the field a ton in situations. Uh, probably the less sparkiest of of the dudes there, right? Uh, he can stretch the field. I mean, he can make plays vertically, though. Right, but I mean, he's not. If you line them all up and they're having a race, who's going to win it? Who, who's going to come in last? I should say. Um, I mean, it's not the fastest receiver. Obviously, Claypool is going to smoke everybody. But who who who, who wins the forty between him and Juju? Because that's mm. that's a real question. Yeah, I mean Deontay didn't. But McLeod's gonna be gonna be yeah be finished second or third in the race. Right, he's got those short legs. It helps him out. Um, I don't know. I I think I think James. Who, who's win. the twitchiest of the two between Juju and uh, mm. and, and Washington? I don't think I'd call either twitchy, but probably Juju. But right. neither neither twitches twitchness factor really is is too high. Right. Um. But anyway, yeah, I mean, we, we it's come not along. it's not shocking with 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 the development of of Chase Claypool, which is mm-hmm. a little bit shocking as, as quick as he's been able to get himself kind of in you know uh, where he's going to get forty snaps a game uh, uh, now. Uh, somebody's got to be the the odd man out in there, and it's obviously it's not, it's not shocking that it that it's uh, that it's Washington. 
Right, yeah, I think that's just a, a very simple, logical Occam's razor answer. The simplest explanation is correct, and Claypool's been playing great. He's earning the play time, and that's kind of left Washington as odd man out there, though, based on Peter's answer that he's too versatile, knows too much. That means Washington has come a long way from being, what was he, left side Oklahoma State? One side only, James Washington. Uh, he was right side. Right side. I always right. forget. I always get those mixed up. But um, he's definitely improved his versatility and ability to move around the formation, which you would expect for a third-year receiver. Anything else Randy Feetner said, Dave, uh, talking to the media that stuck out to you? A lot of questions about Ben not playing. And I'm sure Randy's just going, okay, first of all, I hope to God that this does not happen. And B, uh, Ben's probably going to play. So please stop asking about Ben not playing. Yeah, just that, uh, you know, the backup quarterback and really all it boils down to, that's going to be another, hopefully that's another non-story. They sure have dedicated a lot of time of who's getting what reps and and, and is there a chance that, 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 that both Mason and, and Dobbs plays? Look, long story short, if, if Ben doesn't play for, for, for because he tests positive, Mason Rudolph's going to start the game, mm-hmm. you know? I mean, I, I don't know where there's any, any indecision in that. Uh, and then obviously if, if Mason struggles, uh, in a start, then they would, they would go to a guy like Dobbs. It's in the story. I don't know why there's been so much conversation on it. Yeah. Just quarterbacks. Those are all big storylines, big headlines for, for the week to kind of sells. And a lot of people forget that the last, I mean, you know, uh, Dobbs has played like 30 career snaps period. And a lot of people forget that game against the Raiders wasn't great either. So, uh, they're going to be hand, they'd obviously be handicapped severely. And here, here, the only positive thing that that comes out of all this, like I've said, uh, and, and I said way back in, you know, uh, back back during the off season too, if for if for whatever reason Mason Rudolph has to play uh, uh, during the 2020 season in in meaningful time, you get you get that one fun finality. Uh, all right, this this is the this is a this is a landmark line in the, line in the sands uh, game. All right, we we will find out what he is and isn't in this game. Period. You know, uh, and we'll find out if they made the right decision. Yada yada. Uh, it's it's either pass or fail in the story. If Mason Rudolph has to start and play in this game. Well, if if he were to fail hypothetically, I know we're getting way ahead of ourselves, but w- would that change your 2021 plans? If he failed, does that? mean they bring in a quarterback next year i, I think it, i think it, i think it causes you to look at that a long list of those guys that are willing to play for the minimum salary benefit guys how uh, many quarterbacks are there that are like that because quarterbacks just I, get paid I, you know? I, I don't know does it's ryan fitzpatrick want to play more you know uh there there are those there will be those guys out there there will be there like for will, minimum salary you think what is he making now huh What's what's Fitzpatrick making now? Would he play for the minimum salary benefit? He he would of? he would probably play for it next year. I mean, he made eight million dollars this year. I mean, look, you had for for years you had the Charlie Batches and the, and the Byron Leftwich is doing it. You know, sure. Yeah, I just there, there, I don't know. There, I mean, there so is. We saw the way quarterbacks get paid and the incentives in their deals, and I think it just there's always to find two that. there's always two or three of them out there, and, and that's yeah. what they would look at. It would not it would not get uh, nobody would like like it whoever they choose people will will turn their nose up at it but it would it would be a veteran guy uh sure. uh that look you're not going to even if you draft a guy you're not going to you're not going to draft a guy and bring him in and be your number 2 all right right yeah no, uh, I, I agree with the veteran thing. I just it's just hard to find that guy that fits. In, I, in all those there, there'll, there'll be that guy. <laughs> Trust me, there will be that guy. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, once again, would it be a Fitzpatrick? Would it be I don't know? Go 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 down a list of uh, 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 the free agent quarterbacks next year. Uh, let's pull it up here. I guess we're in the rabbit hole portion of the show pretty quick here. Uh, that's what we do here on Steelers Deep on the Terrible Podcast. I mean, yeah, obviously Fitzpatrick will be a free agent. Um, if he wants to continue playing, I'm guessing he will, considering how well he was playing this year and how angry he was after getting benched for Tua. Um, let's see what quarterbacks will be out there for next season. Obviously, guys like uh, Dak. Kyle Allen, Nick Mullins, uh, Tim Boyle, uh, Jacoby Brissett, looks like. I can uh, see Nick Mullins a backup quarterback in Pittsburgh. Uh, A.J. McCarron. Uh... Barkley, Schwab, Flacco. Mm, bring Flacco to Pittsburgh. Uh, Gabbert. 
Mike I Glennon, there Janus, there, 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 you know, the Brian Hoyers, there are the guys out there. You know, now look, is, is it is going to cause anybody to run out and 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 and, and buy a, buy a bottle of champagne or anything? No, but there will be somebody out there that that they could potentially sign for a minimum salary benefit deal uh, to 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 be the number two. Yeah, C.J. Beathard. Bring him in from 40, 49ers land. Uh, anyway, yeah, good, interesting stuff there. And hopefully hopefully Rudolph does not have to even be evaluated and just not play again this year. And it all kind of becomes moot. That's always the goal with the backup quarterback situation. Right. And, and look, I mean, if they turn around, let's say Rudolph does not play another snap, uh, uh, you know, meaningful snap this season, or or the, the meaningful snaps he does play are against, you know, uh, furniture movers later in the season or whatnot, uh, and he plays mediocre. Then, then it'll be interesting to see, you know, uh, uh, what 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 the organizations do. Uh, long and short of it, here too. Look, we expect Ben Roethlisberger to to sign an extension. End of story. Uh, and, until we have until we see anything that leads us to believe other than that, then to me there's uh, to me you can automatically rule out drafting a quarterback in the first or second round. All right. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then from there, it'll be interesting to see what di- what what direction the organization goes, if any, with a backup quarterback. Uh, and it'll it'll tell you all you need to know about Mason Rudolph at that point because they have both Dobbs and Mason Rudolph under contract, I believe, uh, for for uh, for for 2021. So if they go out there and they sign any other quarterback and and they don't draft one, then that's your answer about what they feel about Mason Rudolph once again. True. No, I agree. And I think that as long as there's no failure and that Rudolph either doesn't play or whatever little time he gets is fine, then they probably just stick with Rudolph and Dobbs and let those guys battle again in camp in 2021. And let's face it, you win a couple another couple more games here anyway, you're going to get in a situation, at least hopefully, that you're in a, at least a week 17, uh, we don't need the game. You know, now I guess it comes down to if the number, you know, what's going to happen with COVID? Is there going to be a, a, an eighth playoff team added? Uh, it, it, you know, it, it, is there going to be uh, uh, the number one seed still up in the air with with, with the Steelers and the Chiefs? You know, so hopefully you're in a, in, a, in, a, in a position in week 17 where you can rest a lot of guys and, and get a look at a guy like Rudolph. Yeah, that's a good problem to have. I don't know if it'll be reality. The Chiefs are what only one game behind Pittsburgh. Only one team gets a bye this week, the number one seed. So I'm guessing that game will probably mean something. I mean, we'll we'll, we'll, we'll see. I mean, obviously the uh, the Chiefs have a couple of tough games left, and, and the Steelers are not out of the woods yet here. But uh, uh, let me ask you, uh, do you, do you how hard do you play in that? Week 17 game if the number one seat is is up up in the air. I know it kind of sounds like a silly question, but is it worth is it worth it? How worth well, it is it? Yeah, I mean that's always the question. The Steelers have rested guys week 17 before with mixed results. I probably would rest the guys that I can, given that my bye week was week four and it's been presumably a, it's been a brutal stretch and it presumably will still be a brutal stretch by the time week 17 rolls around. So yeah, I would use that as a as a rest game. Even if the number one seed is in play still? Oh, if it's in play? No, if it's in play, I'm playing the guys. If okay. it's locked up, though, then then I'm resting guys. If, if, if you can play for the number one seed, though, and get that by, that is worth playing right, the guys. Right, after, right, after week 17. Um, we went to, way down a different rabbit hole there. but uh, I almost took you further. I, but I, 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 I mean, look, I, I, it comes down to this. The, the, the team still trust. There's no reason to think that the team does not trust Mason Rudolph to be the number two quarterback. Yeah, but he's got to go out there and, and show he can play when his number is called upon. And, you know, I didn't think Sunday against the Cowboys was very good, but that was obviously a very small sample size. And so we'll see if there's more on the horizon. All right, what else did Randy say? The, the whole thing about starting early and, and, and basically going empty, the the stuff that, that the offense has, has excelled in the last couple of weeks, he was basically asked, why not come out uh, and, and open up with it? Yeah, he said at the end of it, uh, quote, I think it's a good question. I'm not opposed to doing it earlier. It's things we do talk about. He said just kind of generic game circumstance and flow. We, I don't know, we talk about it. We push for it. Didn't really have a whole lot of an answer there, but I would welcome seeing it earlier in the game given it, its success. I would too, but we're not going to see it. <laughs> you don't think? Well, look, people want to want to know why don't you come out, and open up, and go. Uh, here's here's the thing that that nobody ever uh, dives in into enough when they when they're talking to these coordinators and all. Uh, 
they they talk about the script, but they don't talk about the the uh, kind of the fifteen play script. What is the purpose of a fifteen play script? What do you try to accomplish in your fifteen play script? What would the answer to that look like? Well, I think it's multi layer, but I think what you're fishing for is you want to see how a defense responds to uh-huh. your overall game plan. All right, I got it right. Ding ding ding. Right. And, and that's the root of it, right? I mean, you you you, uh, you want you want a good look early of how uh, uh, a you want plays that you like, you know, mm-hmm. that you, that you're very comfortable with. Uh, and B, you want you know different different uh, personnel groupings, uh, different formations, because you want to see how how the how the opposing defense responds to it. And then you can start making a, a, a adjustments off of that. If you come out and and, and you go empty. And, and and you do you know do the kind of stuff uh, the backyard football if you will you know yeah you might have success with it and 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 you hope you do but what if you don't well say that about anything but if right. it's working I mean I, I will trade being up seven nothing as opposed to not getting the best feel for the defense's response on the first drive of the game because okay. I could do that on the second drive of the game and and just to be clear I'm not saying that you have to literally open with it on the first drive I'm just saying you can use it in non okay, nothing else is working, it's the third quarter, we're down 14, let's just go to this and try to make it work. I'm just saying you can use it when in the first half when the game's competitive. It doesn't have to be this break glass in case of emergency package. I'm not saying you have to use it on your on your opening. All side. right, that, now that, that's where I'm at, okay? okay. I, I am of the mind that you you, you, you come out with your with – your, hey, look, your, your 15-play script can include two plays of, of right. empty, okay? Exactly. Uh, that that kind of stuff because a you want to see how they're going to respond to that anyway mm-hmm. uh, sure. at, at some point they're going to play man are they going to press you know they're going to be going to be one deep you know are they going to try to you know uh, are they going to blitz off you know all, all the different things that come along come, come along with that but I I would more I would be more apt as a fan right now to push for a, a normal kind of fifteen play script you know uh, varied obviously maybe, maybe throwing a couple empty in there and then you know it's probably going to take you. You know, uh, 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 plan on, on on two possessions of doing what you would normally do around the game plan. And then as you start winding down, you know, maybe your final two possessions of, of the first half, then throw it out there. All right. Right. Yeah. And, and, and because who knows if you might need it later on in, in the game or, or B, maybe you can get a, 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 a quick 10 points out of it and go into the locker room up 23 to Three. <laughs> I almost about went, that one. Uh, yeah, I almost went thirteen in there, but uh, mm. uh, you, you see what I'm saying there. So sure. I, I, I I understand that that everybody's clamoring right now. Don't let Randy call plays. Let Ben go go out there and just run run run. Uh, no huddle. Uh, uh, empty. Uh, you just you just the the feasible feasibility factor of it is just not there i don't think and i will be shocked if they come out and open up with that stranger things of course have happened but i i think once again if you're a fan and you're kind of hoping for that stuff i think you're hoping for that stuff after the first two two possessions because i really think they put a lot of stock in running the script to start with and then making adjustments off of that yeah, I think that's a component of it, but I just want to be successful. And obviously, the opening scripts have not been tremendously successful for a while now. And uh, but but to, to to the broader point, I think we both agree that we would welcome the O one personnel at earlier points in the game and non okay, we're getting our butt kick situation type moments. One thing that and Randy talked about this uh, this too about you know not being able to run the football. They 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 got to they've got to start get back to running the football a little bit better early in game. And look, this is this is no surprise. This is the Steelers uh, offense for years. All right, even going back to to uh, to uh, to Todd Haley, even when they had Le'Veon Bell, and they were slow starters running the football. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh you got to figure out a way to 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 scheme this up better. And 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 well. More than anything, I think the thing that, that, that you pointed out in a film room uh, just a couple of days ago here is that, you know, and look, it's not that they're going to be overly creative with, with the run schemes anyway. They do what they do. Uh, they have mixed in the uh, the pre-step uh, motion in, into this this year. Uh, they got to block it up better. P- people, you, you got to execute better, and, and that's one thing that they, they have not done these last two games is execute. Uh, bl- blame it on whatever play calls you want, but if you don't execute, don't execute them or block them up 
uh, then, then, you know, yeah, like you pointed out, you had DeCastro and, 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 and McDonald blocking the same guy. All right. Mm-hmm. Uh, that, that kind of stuff can't happen. You gotta, you gotta block it up. If you block it up, you know, uh, you should be able to run. Yeah. I mean, obviously the play calling has not been sterling. Some of the second and long runs are just killers, but the execution has been even worse. And so I'm putting it more on an execution type thing than I am a play calling thing. There's, there's both of course involved, but it's more towards the latter. Uh, is the latter being execution. I don't know what order I said those words, but execution is the problem. And look, I mean, uh, you're, you're, this isn't an explosive running team, okay? Uh, <laughs> I'm glad I was sitting down for that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but but you you know the the thing that would help this 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 offense out tremendously is being in second and six or less situations. You know. Yeah. Stay on schedule, man. Uh, it, it, what hurts is you get those first and 10 shotgun runs, uh, split, split zone runs that go for one yard, two yards, or God forbid, negative run, yards. And then you're in second down. If, if, if God forbid they run on second and down and, and you don't get anything, then, then, then the snowball has started there, you know, mm-hmm. uh, and you know, look. Obviously, it's it's a results bias kind of thing here, but uh, you would just like overall to get get a feel for this offense to be able to run with the, with their with their scripted plays and have have more success early. At least move the football and 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 get a field position battle underway right right off the start here. All right, let's flip over to Keith Butler and see what he had to say with the media. Um, obviously, he said that, that hopefully getting Hilton and Alu Alu back, their status obviously unknown right now. Would that improve run defense? And said, quote, I hope true. so. We have to, yeah, very, <laughs> very true, very captain obvious statement. But he said, uh, we have to be better. There ain't no doubt about it. We haven't played as well as we want to play. We have to be a little more secure inside. And again, very obvious statements there from Keith Butler. Yeah, uh, nobody asked him what he's doing in base <laughs> in, in eleven, right? Yeah, I'm not. That was, I'm not shocked about that. That that, that that was the one question I was looking to get asked right there. Uh, that would have been the you should that should have been the open, and then somebody should have jumped in with a follow up after that. Uh, they they could have tag teamed that at the opener of that press conference and. Uh, it, Keith, Keith's like me. He's not the most eloquent with his responses, so there would have been something to dive into there uh, had, had 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 you know those questions been asked there. Uh, look, you, you missing? Didn't we talk about this? You are missing three guys up the middle. Technically, you are missing Devin Bush. You are missing Tyson Alualu, who quite shockingly has just been lights out. Uh, up the middle uh, as a nose tackle uh, this year. And then you're missing perhaps, uh, if not the best uh, 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 nickel run defender in the NFL, number two uh, uh, on top of it. Uh, that that hurts. Yeah, I mean, I think there's been individual failures. I think there's been schematic failures. And Ravens have a good run game. But what happened with Dallas was just, just not acceptable last week. All right, and, and why did it happen? Uh, for a variety of reasons, it was some of the schematic stuff. It was some of the poor con- contained stuff. I thought some guys were pressing too much and not doing their jobs, as Keith Butler likes to say. So it's not one singular issue, of course, when things have kind of been this bad, when you're allowing, what, 409 yards in the last two games, most over a two-game span since 2000. Um, really, really bad stuff there. So variety of things, and, and hopefully getting those guys back. We don't know if they, if they will this weekend, but um, they better shut down a Bengals rushing attack because uh, they have not run the ball tremendously well. And if the Bengals stay on schedule, that'll help Burrow out and get the offense to be more successful. Look, every team has injuries. Okay. So uh, one of the things that we talked about this defense going into this season is how, how relatively deep they are. All right. Except obviously at, at every position, except uh, the inside linebacker position, obviously one of the key ones that they, uh, that they lost. Uh, but within that, uh, they still have one of the best run defending uh, inside linebackers in the league and Vince Williams, you know, mm-hmm. uh, Devin Bush, uh, you know, had, had, had not yet. He, he's a volume tackler. He's developed, he, he's, he's established himself as a volume tackler, but has he established himself as a, uh, one of the league's better rud defenders yet? 
Um, no, I mean, obviously he's not as physical and not as downhill as Vince or even Spillane, but he does obviously defend perimeter runs better than either of those guys, Vince or Spillane. Right. And that was, that was, that's where I'm going is you would expect to see a lo- most of the popcorn on, on the edge. And there has been some of that, but that's not where a lot of the primary problems have been though, right? Correct. It's been as much interior as it has been exterior. Right, so then you throw in the fact that you're missing Alu Alu, and then uh, you know probably well, no, probably about. There are some bad run fills in there by both Vince and and and, and, and Spillane these last couple of games. I've thought. Uh, long story short, here this even with the injuries, you would have expected the guys to step up there. And, and long story short, this run defense not be as bad as it's been in the last two games, right? Sure. I mean, you knew it was going to take a hit, but you didn't realize it was going to be as bad as it's been. All right. What I'm getting at here is, all right, you've had you've had two games now. Uh, you're going up against a, another suspect or, or a suspect uh, run offense team in, in, in the Bengals here. There, you, you, you've got a problem if you don't shut this down this week. You've got a serious problem, and you, there, there's serious questions. Now, look, it's not all about run defense in the NFL, but it damn sure don't hurt, all right? Especially a unit that was that 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 opened up on fire, and really outside of the the, the long run to the uh, uh, to to the Eagles kid, uh, pr- pr- pretty pretty on point up until the Ra- Ravens game there. So, who who are you defensively in, in the run game? We're going to find out this week. It's time to get all that crap sewn up right now. And, and this is the game that you're supposed to uh, dominate and get back to showing that, okay, that that happened. We got it straightened out. Next man up, blah, blah, blah. But there, if, if we're, if we're talking about not, uh, we're, if we're talking about giving up another 140 yards on the ground, uh, this game in either a Steelers win or a Steelers close win and God forbid a loss that then, mm-hmm. then, then we have a problem. Sure. No, I think that is uh, – got to bring you in for a pregame speech, Dave. That's, that, that, that's got me ready to, to run through a wall. Yeah, very, very, uh, very uh, uh, Herb Brooks-like, right? Again. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say win-win for the Gipper. Right, right, Herb Brooks, right. Herb Brooks but I mean, well. you, you do. Uh, I no, mean, you're right. you got to cut the crap. you got to shut it down. Right. you gotta, you got to shut the, the, the run down. You're going up against a rookie quarterback, albeit a good rookie quarterback. But uh, – uh, or you know, what, what's the game plan this week? It's got to be shut the run down and put Burrow in uncomfortable situations, and then blitz the living, <laughs> blitz the living bejesus out of them uh, if you have to. But uh, uh, and look, you might even even if Mixon plays, uh, th- this is a run offense that you're supposed to shut down. So, uh, but back to what Keith Butler said, it, look, they've got to do a better job. And in, in so many words, that's what Keith Butler said. Look, we can't have that stuff happen. Right. I mean, he said we can't live like that and still be successful, and he's right. Uh, speaking of inside linebacker, you mentioned the lack of depth there. Avery Williamson, obviously, his uh, practice reps have gone up this week with Vince Williams out with COVID, or on the COVID list, I should say. Um, and Butler said, quote, he's going to have to be ready for us, referring to Williamson. Uh, Vince Williams is out this week, but we expect Vince to come ready to play. But again, there's no guarantee with that. And Williamson still being that number three inside linebacker will have to be next man up if there's an injury or whatever the scenario is. And so we might get our first look of Avery Williamson on the field this week as a Pittsburgh Steeler. And that's what I've said, but I don't don't know what it's going to look like uh or i'm interested to see what what they do there yeah i don't quite know how they're going to do it if it's time if there's some some sort of rotation i don't know but he will be on the field this week in some capacity at least on special teams i'm confident in that number 51 and you think we'll go he's going to be on special teams I do. I, why are you so anti? Really I, I just teams? i have a I mean, feeling that he's not, like not. james I, harris i know i just have a feeling that he's not but we'll see all right. I mean, he may not be a core guy, but he'll do something. What 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 backup inside linebacker doesn't play special teams in the NFL? Okay, I'm just I'm just saying. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, I mean, if if he doesn't, then I get a huge I'm pat. Sure. I get a huge pat on the back going against the grain if if he don't play any special teams this I'll, week. I'll pat you on the back. Anything else from Keith Butler? Um, I don't think anything else that was that was major that stuck out to me. No, look, I mean, uh, it goes back to, you know, the, the key thing is how they, how they're going to use him. And I think you could see seven, six, seven, eight snaps of him in a dime that, that that's kind of what I'm guessing, uh, there. And, uh, you know, barring uh, obviously injuries or whatnot, but, uh, uh, I have a feeling that's when we're most likely to see him. Okay, so they were not pleased with Marcus Allen's performance in dime. I mean, he got, he got pulled in that game. So, right. And, and rightfully so, I think, you know, 
Yeah, I mean, he had one bad rep there. Some of those runs were kind of unexpected, but yeah, I mean, Spillane finished the game out in dime, so I don't know if Allen's going to be the guy going forward or not. Right. All right, Dave, uh, before we get to, um, or no, let's just jump right actually into our Bengals preview right now. Bengals sitting here 2-5-1, and one, but I think that record is a little deceiving. They've played these games really close. Four of these five losses have been by uh, five points or fewer. This is an offense averaging 30, 30 point something points per game over the, their last three. They just upset the Tennessee Titans. They're coming off a bye. It's a team you don't want to uh, don't want to underestimate, Dave. Uh, look, I, I think there, there's the questions being floated around out out there right now. <laughs> Are the Steelers the worst eight no team ever? Uh, is, is there such a thing? First, uh, first, first and foremost, is there such I a thing? Care. I mean, I'm sure you can debate it. There aren't just many eight no teams in general. I can pull up the list of the last couple but I'm not going to probably remember their circumstances well enough. I think the last eight no team to win a Super Bowl, it was like the Saints in 09. So this, you know, teams that have started eight, eight no have not always hoisted the Lombardi by season's end. All right. Uh, if, if we're asking that question, I see I, there's an angle here. Uh, okay. Uh, Lead me to water. Right. Uh, are the Bengals the best two, five and one team ever? <laughs> <laughs> They're better than the record indicates. I don't know how you want to frame two five. Not too, not too many two five one teams in general. But um, yeah, I mean, this is a team that can that can they can win this game. I'm not saying. I thought last week Dallas. I really couldn't see the path. I could see the path of the Bengals this week. All right. Well, and, and see, I was watching. I, I made a mistake and watched that Good Morning Football show this morning. I normally don't watch that, but uh, they, they were they were kind of talking there, and and, and nearly all of them said, "Yeah, you know, this is a game." They they were on both sides of the fence. You know, Steelers can uh, can can blow the Bengals out here, but we wouldn't be surprised if if we're in here Monday morning talking about no more undefeated teams in in the NFL. Why is that? Is is it because on is it any given Sunday? Yeah, I think it's that. I think obviously the performance against Dallas was underwhelming for Pittsburgh, and the Bengals again are better than what their record at, seems to indicate and advertises. So I think those combinations probably. Lead that up. Plus, it's AFC North, Steelers, Bengals. These games generally can be pretty close. Now, wait a minute. Is it, is it a trap game or isn't it a trap game? <laughs> Not a trap game. <laughs> People keep trying. Oh, uh, evidently, this is a. There is a trap game. There is such thing as a trap game because you and I don't uh, uh, don't play sports. Yeah, I mean, I saw that comment. I and obviously there's. Well, you. Played, I, I I played sports I mean, from played, from, yeah. from the time I was four to the time I was like thirty five. I was and if it wasn't for an ankle and and really tearing up my ankle, I'd I, you know I'd I'd probably still be occasional softball guy. You know, uh, I was quintessential uh, beer league uh, uh, church league softball guy. You know, you were uh, Uncle Rico. Yeah, pretty pretty much. Over, yeah, over yeah. That mountain. And look, I mean, I was, I was, I was, you know, until my grand, my my granddaddy had me throwing junk at her. My my granddaddy, uh, uh, I don't, a lot of people, some people remember who Don Sutton is, a great uh, Hall of Fame pitcher for for the Dodgers. Well, he was from my hometown, and my granddaddy used to be uh, uh, umpire back when 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 Don Sutton was just a kid, yada yada, and. Uh, my, my granddaddy was big, bigger into baseball and, and, and pitching mechanics and all like that. So he had me, uh, at an, at an early age, throwing a lot of junk, you know, before, before a kid's arm is, is developed, you know, and I had, I, I, you name it, I could, I could, I could throw a damn, uh, curve ball at like the age of, uh, seven that just fall right off the table. Well, I, he screwed my arm up. You know, and mm. and I was done. My arm was done by the time I was ten. You know, really? Uh, yeah. So I blame my granddaddy for that. But anyway, uh, I you know I played obviously high school football and all like that. I, I you know baseball, softball, and all like that. So don't hand me the you didn't play sports. You don't know the 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 competitiveness and how. Uh, and, and anyway, someone tried to tie that all into into us uh, not knowing that that there's such thing as a trap game. I found that amusing. I, just to get your perspective on it, there was no, there was never a game in, in high school football where you felt like, okay, this team we can beat, and we don't have to worry as much uh, about it. That never feeling never really came up. Uh man, I was too concerned about what I was going to do after the game. Uh, <laughs> you know, I went, to, I went to a small school, a small private school, uh, high school, you know, uh, a Catholic high school, and a lot of times we were playing. We were we were severely outclassed. Mm. Okay, uh, we had maybe two or three uh, athlete, you know, 
prime. Look, I I I I grew up and played in in, in Northwest Florida. That, that was a hotbed. You know, Florida, obviously, high school football. Uh, uh, Florida and Texas, right? You know, mm-hmm. hot beds for high school football. Uh, and it, Western PA, right? You'll get emails uh, about that. Western PA as well too. Uh, but it was really, you know, a hotbed back there, you know, in, in the eighties and nineties and all like that, especially uh, in, in my area. So uh, you had a lot of talent coming out of our area. Uh, uh, you know, some of these four A. I think four A was the top class back then. I don't even think they had five A back then. But uh, and then you had these, you know, uh, the smaller schools, obviously, the, the, and we were one of those smaller schools. So uh, unless we were playing, you know, uh, uh, you know similar one A or two A schools, you know, we didn't have a chance, you know. And then unfortunately, because of the amount of schools, like, you know, three or four games, you were playing the Escambia High Schools where Emmett Smith went to school, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, so. I don't, I don't, I don't even see how you can compare the two, you know, uh, and, and no, those teams never got beat. If they got beat, it was, it was because they got beat by a similarly competitive school. You know what I'm saying? In, 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 in high school, uh, did, did those games happen or were they, they're more likely to be, you know, the severely outclassed games in high school or college, you know? Uh, it just doesn't happen in it, it doesn't happen in in, in in professional football. Yeah, no, I I hear you. So anyway, I don't know how we went down that rabbit hole, but um, look, we got yeah. the we got the living snot beat out of us, man. I mean, uh, I mean, you'd have Emmett Smith running for two hundred twenty yards in the first half and five touchdowns, you know. Mm. Uh, I mean, there 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 were some games where you just were hoping to finish healthy, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, and so yeah, the Bengals to, to go back to Cincinnati is a talented team, and let's talk about their offense a little bit, Dave. And obviously, I don't know how we went down that rabbit hole, but yeah, anyway. uh, we asked that every every podcast, I ask myself that question. Um, Joe Burrow, number one pick of the draft, and he's playing like it. He's playing really well. Tomlin Butler spoke his praises about the job he's doing, the composure, the consistency, the leadership. They'll go empty. They'll run a lot of RPOs. They they put a lot of stuff in in his hands, and I think he's doing a pretty good job so far. I tell you, for a young quarterback, he seems to process everything. They're making it easy on him, I think, uh, 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 with, with a lot of RPO stuff and all like that, and you know, not 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 exotic, not not a lot of exotic stuff. I don't see as far as the run game goes. You know, uh, they 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 run you know, like everybody else. They run inside zone. They run some duo. I don't I don't I, obviously with their offense line B. I don't see outside zone or, or haven't uh, uh, with them. Uh, they, they keep, do some full blocks and some insert blocks that are kind of interesting stuff I don't see too often. Right, and even that's kind of hard to do though when you don't have continuity. Mm-hmm. True. Which, which they don't right now. Uh, look, it all boils down to them staying on schedule. Really, with him, uh, he makes a lot of good, a lot of lot of decisions uh, with, with the RPO stuff. The thing, he will, he will, he will force some footballs where they don't belong. Uh, that's gotten him in, in trouble in the middle of the field, specifically. Uh, what else has stuck out with him? Uh, get him in third long situations uh, is obviously ideal. That's when he's a most likely to take a sack or just put the ball uh, in a position where he where where it doesn't go. I think he's been really efficient and, and has done a good job overall in red zone, and, that, and obviously that's where their point scoring has come because they're not an overly explosive team. I think they've got something like twenty. Uh, 20, 20 something explosive plays or 20 yards or more. And I think T Higgins has been on a receiving end of eight of them. All right. Uh, they have like, I think five runs of 20 yards or more or, or right around in there. And Joe Mixon, obviously, uh, uh, part of them. I think he's got three of those. I think, uh, the one of them was an end around to tie to, to, uh, to Boyd. Uh, the, 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 the key receiver in this game is Tyler Boyd, uh, mm-hmm. because he is the Juju Smith Schuster of their offense right now. Uh, he is a physical guy. Uh, he can, you can move him around obviously, but the, 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 the thing you want to look out the most for, I think with him is, is Tyler Boyd in the slot, especially on third down, the way the Juju is kind of the go-to guy on third down money down situations. Uh, Tyler Boyd has 17 catches on third and fourth down this year. That is tied with Juju Smith-Schuster mm. for the fifth most in football. And since 2017, 
Boyd is tied for third in the NFL with 70 catches on third and fourth down, and he leads the NFL with 62 first downs on those 70 catches. So he's the go-to guy in those got to have a place. He's going to be in the slot most of the game. And then T. Higgins is interesting. You know, he's not he was not a, a great athlete in terms of testing coming out of Clemson, but he's averaging nearly 15 yards per catch this year. That's third of any rookie in football. So the receivers are interesting. They're going to be tough to deal with. It's kind of like Dallas, where. The offensive line is kind of rough. The run game has not been super successful. A young quarterback, obviously Joe Burrow, better than Garrett Gilbert, but they have some talent at receiver that can make plays and win their one-on-one matchups. You know, when we were talking at the beginning of the year of how this the schedule kind of sets up and kind of the different quarterbacks that they that they face, they they you know, Burrow at times they'll, they'll do stuff would get him out of the pocket. Okay, uh, mm-hmm. I I think they they don't do as much uh, kind of I don't think as kind of flood stuff as I would expect them to do. Did you see much, see them do a lot of stuff that that ends up with them flooding a side and, and kind of giving him a levels a levels read? Uh, the concept I saw most that would fit, fit that bill was their snag spot concept, the corner curl flat combination. Sometimes they dress it up and run the over route that becomes the. The, the snag the curl route so there, there's some of that but yeah not not tremendously so i, I agree right uh uh i i would think that they want to try to maybe get him out of the pocket a little bit in in, in this game just to just to keep guys from wanting dupree from from teeing off on him uh Obviously, he's he's, I mean, the guy can move. Oh, he yeah, he, he can move. Now, the thing is, he hadn't taken off with the ball. I, uh, other than a couple of quarterback sneaks, he's probably run about, what, 20 times? Yeah, I think it's 35 total attempts, but it was like half of those are sneaks. In the games I watched, he sneaked the ball four times. I mean, they will he will call his number on on if they need a yard, and he's a big guy, and he can right, get those, but, those first downs. Right, but 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 between uh, between sneaks and uh, and kneel downs and scrambles, he did not a lot. Di- in other words, not a lot of design runs with him. Right, no, very few design runs, but he can run if he has to. If there's just, if there's good coverage, he can take off. So again, will that force you to play more zone coverage potentially? And the Steelers' strength obviously is not playing zone. No, I'm not. I, he's going to have to beat me with his legs a couple of times before I for, before I question that. I, I I don't want my rookie quarterback out there getting popped either. Mm-hmm. Uh, my first rounder either. I, I his mobility is not going to cause me to alter me not playing a lot of a lot of man. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that, that's probably the approach I would take, but I just, I know he can be a threat with his legs. And so I think those are just things you have to consider. And look, I mean, obviously the thing that stuck at, or, 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 or you know, at LSU last year with him was his ability to extend plays. Sure. Uh, how much of that has he done though yet in these last few games? Well, he's been getting just just beat up so much it's been tough to to extend the play but but yeah that, that's part of it not not just the mobility to run but just to keep the play alive and if you're playing man sometimes you kind of lose where the quarterback's at and sometimes zone offers you a little bit more vision on the ball and where the quarterback's going if he's moving in the pocket but we'll see and 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 um it'll be the first test against burrow and i imagine it'll be the first in a long career facing joe burrow so we'll see how the steelers do uh right yet you know as far as like a baker mayfield out of the pocket making plays okay uh how would you compare burrow's ability outside the pocket to where mayfield is at right now no i wouldn't say he's at the mayfield level um and it probably never be at that because i think mayfield's just a better athlete overall but i mean the guy can make plays extend the play and can make plays outside the pocket so i just want to be cognizant of that right in other words i'm not altering to i'm not i'm not you know we talk about when they play the uh, play the browns about you know try to do a good job and making sure mayfield doesn't get out of the pocket on you you know uh you well know. i want to i want to have that same approach with Burr. they didn't do that with gilbert last week they had terrible contain with gilbert right so I, I don't i you know in other words i I'm not going to get totally upset if they don't do a good job. In other words, I don't want to sacrifice my pass rush with 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 the sole idea of oh we don't want to you know flushing. They just need to be rushing these guys. Uh, Watt and Dupree are dropping like 15 percent over the last month <laughs> after weird. being at five or six percent the first four weeks. That's the problem. Well, look, I mean, it got, they're not going to roll. They're not going to roll the base out there against the left. And look, here's the thing with, with, with the Bengals though: is they've got some talented receivers. Yeah, but so did the Cowboys. <laughs> right, I, I know. I know that that's what I'm getting at. Is they have they have the, they're probably not as a talented as a group as the Cowboys, top to bottom. Mm-hmm. But Boyd's obviously established. Uh, AJ Green's a veteran. Uh, 
AJ's going to hit him for a 30 yard play in this game in the story. Yeah, he always does. Back shoulder fade nonsense on he, third and 10. Right. He always does. And then T Higgins is a guy kind of, kind of deceptive on you that uh, if, if they get a single high look that, that they'll, they'll take a shot uh, 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 down the field with him. All right. So yeah. uh, they are a talented enough uh, uh, and experience, you know, and got enough experience at the wide receiver position that, they would be foolish not to roll out 11 personnel, especially being down, you know, uh, you know not looking good on, on the running game a- aspect of it. They would be foolish not to at least come out early in the game with 11 personnel and see how the Steelers respond to it. Right. I mean, what what tells us that Keith Butler will do anything different this week? Because he's speaking the same language as he did last week versus Dallas. Well, it's not so, I mean, it's not as heavy as we got to stop 21 or whoever, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, uh, you would think that uh, if I'm the Bengals, that's what I try to do. And I, and I try to run a lot of, a uh, lot of RPO stuff out of that. A lot of, a lot of kind of rub stuff against, uh, you know, if the Steelers, uh, 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 don't play zone against it, then, then I, then I rub a lot of rub routes. If, if they do, then, then I just run a lot of the concept stuff, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, I think they will. I agree with you. So right, the, let's talk. The, the, the question is, 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 will the Steelers come out? Will they match up? How will they match up against the 11 personnel? Because if I'm the Bengals, that's the way I come out. Yeah. See, see if they're going to be in base or in nickel. And I hope they're in nickel. And if Mike Hilton doesn't play, maybe they're going to be in base more. Uh, the, 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 the thing that they'll try to do too, occasionally, uh, once again, is they're going to Burrow. Ha- the thing that stuck out, Burrow's not, you know, you, we talk about Ben Roethlisberger, uh, having problems dialing in the, uh, the 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 deep ball so far this season, Burrow hasn't been great on it either. Yeah, his arm is probably the worst part of his game. He just overall arm strength, it's not, it's average to below. You know, so uh, you go into this one thinking that they they shouldn't be able to big play you down the field a lot. The biggest concern is it, it, with 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 this receiving crew with them and where a lot of their big plays seem to seem to have come from is is catching the ball over the middle and running with it. I mean, they'll do a lot of Tyler Boyd on slants and mm-hmm. and, and and stuff like that. You you got to go into this one thinking we can't let Tyler Boyd kill us. He's going to have 8 K. He's going to have 8 catches, but is it, are his eight catches going to be 66 yards or 166 yards? Mm-hmm. No, that's a great point because, you know, they're going to go to him early and often. And, yeah, Haas White Juke is the uh, play I broke down in, in the scouting report, which is basically an isolation play to get uh, Boyd uh, over the middle uh, on a linebacker, on a DB, and just let him win one-on-one to sit down versus zone and run away versus man. And so uh, you're going to have to come up come up with a, with a good plan, probably play a lot of middle, middle of the field close, a lot of cover one, cover one rat and stuff to try to bracket Boyd on third down and just clog up the middle of the field. Yeah, I want him to try to read those safeties a little bit better. Talking about Burrow? Yeah. Yeah, uh, he'll, he'll, I think Burrow will throw some floaters downfield, so you got to pick off some of those floaters that, that aren't zipped in there. And the thing too, get your, mark my words, get your hands up, especially if Tyson Aluelu is able to play or whatnot, get your hands up when you rush him, because I think he's had a couple of tip passes, uh, especially, I, I know one for, for a fact, uh, in the red zone there. Uh, this is a guy that I don't think kind of elevates that ball too much, uh, 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 coming out. And if you get your hands up on him, I think you can get a tip pass and possibly an interception with him. You yeah, heard it, you point. heard it right here. All right, Uh, let's flip over to the Bengals defense. And again, not a great unit, kind of similar to the Cowboys, but they are a 4-3 defense. And that kind of presents some different challenges the Steelers don't always see. Right, but it's uh, it's challenges that they're they're not strangers to. Mm -hmm. And we've seen the power work against that in the past. And this is an ambidextrous power team. I want to see some power. I do too, and I think we're going to see power. I think we're going to see a six offensive lineman because they generally go with a six uh, lineman, uh, an offensive tackle, in this case Hawkins, in all likelihood, assuming things are good on the COVID front, to match up better versus those defensive ends than a tight end trying to do it against a big 6'5", 270 uh, defensive end. Uh, there's no excuse for this team not being able to run on the Bengals. End of story. I, I know that young kid. Who's the Wyoming linebacker? Uh Logan Wilson. Right. Uh, he's having a nice season. Uh, even so, does he jump out on tape at you? 
Well, he did start with a team lead with two interceptions, but he seems to be only playing in passing situations and nickel. Not He's playing in sub. I don't think he's really out there as often as a base linebacker. Okay. I mean, uh, I, I, you know, I, I, there's no reason not to run on this, on this Bengals team. Yeah. Now, here, here, here's the thing they get, uh, they're probably going to get Sam Hubbard back. That's going to help a little bit. Uh, this week, especially in in, in the pass rush uh, aspect of it, Carl Lawson. All Carl Lawson wants to do is get after the quarterback anyway. So you ought to be able to run at Carl Lawson. <laughs> but bless, I love Carl Lawson. You know, you and I both are, are huge Carl Lawson fans. Uh, but run, against the run, not so much. Yeah, this is a run defense allowing 144 yards per game. They're allowing 5.2 yards per carry. That's worse than football. So, again, similar st- story as Dallas. You better be able to run on these guys if you don't. I mean, if you can't run on Dallas or, or Cincinnati, then you're really just struggling. I mean, I like uh, I mean the, the older guy up in the middle, Mike, uh, who's a defensive tackle, uh, Green Bay. Uh, Mike Daniels. Mike Daniels. Uh, you liked him for years, but he's not the same Mike Daniels against the run. Uh, and, and if they don't have Geno in there and they, there is just no reason not to be able to run at these guys, either, either on the edge or up the middle. I mean, this, this we should be talking about a James Conner, uh, 130 yards on the ground, another 20. I mean, this, this could be 160 or should be 160 or 170 yard game for, 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 for James Conner. Yeah, it's not the same defensive line that it used to be. They used to be, you know, defenses weren't great overall, but they were really strong up front with Pecco and Atkins and Gino's not the same Gino and Carlos Dunlap's been traded to Seattle. Michael Johnson's long gone and, and just the, the pass rush is non-existent. It's Carl Lawson and no one else. I got 11 sacks this year. Lawson's got three and a half of them. No one else has more than one. So I know, I know that Hubbard's missed some time. He's probably going to play this weekend. And so that'll be good for them. But um, their just defensive line is not winning at the point of attack at all. Oh, uh, let's see here. Uh, Pratt. Pratt's the other guy that I'm thinking about. Jermaine Pratt. Uh, has he? Has he? Uh, to me, he did. He, I, I, I watched three games and he didn't jump out at me. Yeah, same. I'm sure there's been some progression. It, it's it's better than it's been. You know, they've had Nick Vigil in the past and they've had some really bad inside linebackers, but it, it's still a pretty young group that needs some improvement. You know what's weird with this Bengals team? Why is every single year their safeties or their top tacklers? <laughs> every single year, it's Von Bell and Jesse Bates this year, 50, 57 respectively. That kind of is an, an indication that uh, they're having to make a lot of plays in the run game. Well, I want, I want, I want to, I want to see Jesse Bates tackle a lot in this game, uh, right. for, for for sure. Uh, Von Bell really hard, hard, uh, really like like him, you know, as a physical player. William Jackson, obviously, we've talked about him uh, for 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 years now. I'm not so I. What's going to happen if uh, Darius Phillips don't play in this game? Yeah, that's a good question. And, and McKen- look, McKenzie Alexander, I guess, would be kind of questionable as too. Hadn't he missed some time, though? Uh, Wasn't he I on the COVID know. list or something? Was he? Well, he's, still got, he's got the illness designation right now. I don't know what that's related to. Um, they're, they're, a, they're a mess yeah, in the secondary, right. plain and simple. Yeah. They are. They are. I mean, I like Von Bell. He's got... Definitely a lot of Terrell Edmonds type vibes. The cornerbacks, I don't know. They just had a lot of a lot of rotation or a lot of shuffling, and, and that's created some big issues. So going to be interesting. Look, I mean, this whole defense of theirs is just messed up right now. So uh, the Steelers should be able to to uh, to I mean, regardless of whether or not zone or zone or man situations there. I'm not sure. I pick on William Jackson a lot in this game, mm-hmm. uh, but uh, you know, here here's the thing. Going back and and watching, I I had a uh, hard drive full of. Uh, uh, or DVR full of uh, edge matchups that I had hadn't gotten back around to 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 watch it and going back over and I watched some of those last night on top of some some Bengals film there, you know some of the stuff that some of these teams are doing with this uh, with this pre snap motion that we're not seeing that we haven't uh, seen the Steelers do and 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 obviously I've we talked about it but we haven't we haven't given the people uh, we haven't drilled it down enough here. Uh, obviously, they had, they're not passing hardly any out of the pre-snap motion here. All right. Not only that, I think some of the schemes that you're seeing that we should be able to ske- see schemed up by the Steelers a little bit better are are two-man wide receiver route combinations off of this. In terms of what going max protect and trying to air it out deep? Right. Yeah. 
I think you could do that. But the final couple points I was going to make with the Bengals is go vertical on them. They've allowed 34 completions of 20 plus yards. That's 30th in football as a defense. And you should win situational football too, because the Bengals struggle both on third down and in the red zone. Well, I think you can run some 11 personnel even and, and, and have your, your jet, you know, your, your, your jet action pre-snap and all like that. Uh, but we need to see some creativity, more creativity out of that, and, and them running some two man two man uh, uh, route combinations, and, and and hit one or two of those in, in this game. We need to start seeing that. And and make no mistake, we've already talked a lot about, and it's finally, uh, you know, Randy was asked about this uh, uh, during his coordinators talk uh, yesterday. Uh, Look, I hate to beat on it, but Ben's got to start connecting down the field. It, plain as plain as simple, got to start connecting at a higher rate down the field. I I'm not saying that he can't. Okay, we just have got to start seeing it now. It's half it's halfway through the season. It's when he started to heat up a couple years ago in in 2018 after having a slow start. We have got to start seeing this team hit down the field more more consistently for these big plays. And this is the defense do it against. Now, do you put those issues? I know it's always a combination, but do you put that more on Ben or do you put that more on the receivers for failure for failure to do that? It's been a little bit of both, but uh, sure. there's been some, you know, we talk about the Claypool catch uh, and, and yada, yada should have been pass interference. Okay. It wasn't, that was a ball. He should have caught plain and simple. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's also been balls that Ben has been off the mark on. They've either been a foot out of, uh, out of bounds or they've been, uh, overthrown by two yards or they've been underthrown by two yards. All right. There hasn't been many. He should have caught that. Yeah, I think, I think that's fair. I think aside from the Claypool one, there aren't a whole lot of others coming to mind. I'm sure there's another one or two, but they just have not been close to being caught. I mean, how many drop in the buckets? I mean, there's been some nice kind of back shoulder stuff to, 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 to James Washington over on the left hand side. There's obviously been the deep ball to Claypool against the, uh, the, uh, the Broncos, beautiful ball dropped right in a bucket, uh, type situation. But how, how many, how many been to Mike Wallace, been to Martavis Bryant throws have there been this season? Yeah, not enough. That's for sure. All right now, now a lot of those now 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 make no mistake. A lot of those uh, Martavis and 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 Wallace <laughs> throws of yesteryear uh, were that guy had three yards on the guy. Okay, mm-hmm. and we're not we're not seeing that this year. We haven't seen that. Yeah, they don't have the other, other than other than the clay pull on a linebacker, which you better see that. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. So yeah. You, you're you're talking about how much is that wide receiver related? Uh, it, it, it's it's some of it in there. You know we how many you know how many uh, uh, juju slot fades have we seen? Where there it is. Right. Yeah. They don't have the naturally freaky. I mean, Claypool's obviously an, an exception, but they don't have the the Wallace Bryant guys. A lot of these deep balls are going to be more contested than they would be to guys of of the past. You know, people take this as me picking on Ben. It's just, it's just, a, it's an observation now. And look, well, I've been talking about it for four freaking weeks now. Now the media is talking about it uh, this week. All right, uh, this is not new. This is not picking on Ben. This is picking on the entire offense as a whole. You look, it's been effective what they're doing so far with 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 with, with running these shorter uh, concepts, especially out of zero one personnel. We recapped the stats this past week. We've talked about this the last two weeks. But you cannot entirely get in a situation where you're o- running o one personnel, running these rub routes, running these these five and six yard completions. All right, with, with an occasional pump fake touchdown. All right. Uh, you're going to have to start stretching the field. Yeah, and this is the week to do it. If they can't do it against the Bengals, then then who can they do it against? Uh, and I know what's right going to happen if, if Ben hits a couple of these. Oh, there you go. You're picking on Ben. Ben showed you. Whatever. I mean, it's an observation that's plain and simple that this team needs to press the football down the field a little bit better than what they're doing. Yeah, and when they do, we'll, we'll praise them for right. it and we'll say good job. All right, Dave, anything else with the Bengals you want to touch on offense, defense, otherwise? Uh, no, I'm expecting them to eat them up on both sides of the ball, to be honest with you. I hope so. We said the same against Dallas, and right. obviously that didn't turn out the best. All right, Dave, before we get to our Week 10 picks, let's hear from our friends over at my bookie. 
Uh, let's do it. Let me open up uh, this real quick. Late fall college ball, the, N- the NBA bubble, and UFC Fight Island. It's clear 2020 has been a year unlike any other, which is why you need a sports book with, with offers unlike any other. Get some skin in the game today when my bookie were odds boost, lightning deals, and free bets await all season long. And with Turkey Day right around the corner, there really is no better time to feast on some NFL action. Whether you're a first-time customer or have been playing with my bookie for years, there is no shortage of value to be found in the thousands of game lines, unique prop bets, and contests that they offer every week. Sign up or get reloaded today. Find an edge, make your bet, and get paid. They also boast a fully-fledged casino platform, giving you access to all the classic tables, slot, and card games you'd expect to find at your local spot. And the best part is, at my bookie, the doors never close, so you can continue to build your bankroll even after the stadium lights have gone out. Make the right play and sign up today at my bookie. And when you do, use promo code TERRIBLE. That's TERRIBLE to get your deposit matched halfway all the way up to a thousand bucks. The terms are simple. You put in two hundred dollars, they'll match you with another one hundred dollars in your account. If you already are planning to bet this season, this is free betting money. It's winning season at my bookie, so come join in on the fun and win some cash while you're at it. All right, Dave. There's my uh week ten train horn sound. Mm-hmm. So let's make our picks for the week. You you won last night, right? You picked the Colts, I picked the Titans, and I turned out pretty wrong on that one. Yeah, uh, uh, score one for the uh, adjusted net yards for passing attempts. Stat. Oh, yeah. We didn't talk about that. Do you want to talk about that now? <laughs> yeah, I always want to talk about it. <laughs> yeah, well, well, I didn't have to ask the question, but but feel free. You have updated the numbers and where the Steelers sit. Uh, absolutely, and, and you would would ask me now after, after I don't have it pulled up here. So let me pull up some numbers here. And uh, obviously, I like the uh, – Look, when you look midseason and you look at where teams are in the rankings of the adjusted net yards for passing attempt and and and, and the differential uh, stat, you know, look, two things we're looking at: differential and really defensive uh, uh, side of the football. And then you get your top 10, 12, 14 teams right right along there, and you you rank them at a midseason point and all. And a lot of times it ends up being teams that have good records. And then people say. Well, there you go. Thanks for that, Captain Obvious. You know, mm-hmm. but I, I, I think it, I think it, it, it goes into the importance of. It, it's a reminder of how important it is to have a good pass defense. Play, play it as simple. And then, just in my most recent rankings, when you look historically at this stat, and it's one of the things I really like to do historically, especially over the last twenty years, when it comes to adjusting net yards for tip, tip, tip stat, is look at historically where teams have stood at eight games played, which is obviously the halfway mark of the season, and the predictability of the teams that have the best shot at winning the Super Bowl. Now, we have seen teams over the years not be in the top eight of either you know the, the defensive number we're looking for or the or, or the differential number that wind up going to the Super Bowl, but, a lot of, but they don't go on to win the Super Bowl. Long story short, I have narrowed it down now to eight teams that I think based on defensive adjusted net, net yards for passing attempt stat, at, at eight games played and differential of offensive and defensive number, I have eight teams in the running to win the Super Bowl this year. And, and, it's, and it's probably going to be surprising that a couple of teams are not on this list. Here are the eight teams that I have that I that I think the Super Bowl winning team this year is going to c- come out of. Kansas City, Tampa Bay, the Los Angeles Rams, the Indianapolis Colts, the Pittsburgh Steelers, the San Francisco 49ers, the Baltimore Ravens, and a surprise team in here, the Miami Dolphins. All right. Mm. Uh, now a lot there are probably not a lot of people thinking right now, yeah, the Miami's gonna go on and win it all. Sure. There's, there's probably not a lot of people thinking that, that that all the issues that San Francisco has had this year, that they're that that they're going to win it all. All right. Uh, so that leaves us Kansas City, Tampa Bay, the Colts, the Steelers, and the Ravens. All right. Were there any teams that didn't make the list that surprised you? Like Seattle? Well, I know their well, defense that, is Yeah, that, that's what I'm talking about. The Green Bay Packers, the Seattle Seahawks, and New Orleans Saints are obviously not on this list. Okay? Uh, is there a good chance? And, and it's all defensive number related. 
All right, those teams, their they're, they're defensive adjusted net yards per passing attempt right now says there's no way they can win it. All right, now no way is a is a is a broad term, right? Uh, it's no way until they do it. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, st statistics obviously, you know, it's not a foolproof you know situation here. But uh, the way statistically the defenses have played, uh, specifically when it comes to the Packers and Seahawks, historically it tells you there's no way they can win. All right. Uh, the Saints are the closest to this that you think, okay, they could buck the defensive number and and it probably wouldn't be overly surprising. But I, I think when you look at the list of eight that I just read off to you with the Packers and the Seahawks not being on it. Oh, another thing too, I don't you know, I, I, don't, I don't want to go too, too far down the rabbit hole, is uh, I'll tell you why the Steelers' offense is good from a pass perspective and why teams like, like there's, there's reason to be concerned about Seattle. Third down, Ben, ben and the Steelers on third down have been phenomenal, right? Yeah, um, I don't know exactly where they rank, but, but they have been good. Uh, and Ben specifically on third down. Now, a lot of that's obviously coming in, in zero one personnel and yada, yada. But uh, Ben, Ben, when, when, when you talk about, you know, there was a whole uh, uh, talk about pro football focus and and the Steelers are eight. No, despite Ben. I don't know, man. You you look at the third down, some of the third down numbers on on Ben, and that's the reason the Steelers are eight. No, I, I think in a, in a lot is. Uh, is it okay to rank Ben as like the 16th best best quarterback in the league right now overall? Just, uh, just overall. I, I don't have a ranking. Yeah, I mean, I would probably put him higher than that, but the idea that's been talked about nationally of Ben holding this team back, I would just watch the last two weeks and, and ask, is Ben holding this team back? He's the reason why they've won these games the last two weeks. I think the choice of words is absolutely horrible there. Why he's holding the team back. I, I, I think the way you frame this is why Ben is maybe statistically the 12th to 16th quarterback in the NFL. And then that will not sell as well though. I, I know it won't, but it's a, it's a damn truth. I know. I, you know? Yeah, I, I, I don't disagree. And and the thing the, the the thing the reason why it is 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 to not pushing the football down the field. Okay, that's number one. It's something that we've talked about for several weeks here. Until he starts hitting the deep ball, that that that's Ben's place in in these rankings here. I think. Okay, uh, and really is his his ability to play on third down and late in games and all like that are reasons why you would probably say. Are you crazy ranking Ben 12th to 16th in the NFL? Look, if you stack them up from adjusted net yards for passing attempt stat number, that's where Ben falls is right in the middle of the league. It's not a sin, all right? Uh, it's just where the numbers say he falls. Where he makes you better is third down, red zone, uh, uh, all those things that, that are key components uh, of the game there. But it's not a sin to rank. It's, it's a sin to say – that Ben is a reason uh, there there ain't no despite Ben. Okay, mm -hmm. if anything, there ain't no because of Ben. And and to be fair, I think PFF ranks Ben as like their fifteenth quarterback. Right. So he's in that range you're talking about. So I just want to put that out there for context. And but, I don't you, I don't think they're wrong in that aspect. I just think they're framing the whole argument wrong. Yeah, no, I think that's fair. And, and just looking at the Steelers' adjusted numbers overall, I mean, they're obviously in a good place. They're on your your top six of winning a Super Bowl. Um, so is there any improvement on those numbers? Is, is there anything, any goal they should be aiming for the rest of the year? Anything else you can, you can offer? I think you have to ask yourself is, is, is have we seen the best of this past defense? Can this past defense get better? Will they go? Look, nothing ever stays the same in life. You're either moving forward, or you're moving backwards. All right. Uh, this, this team posted a defensive adjusted net yards for passing attempt number of 5.01 in the first eight games, all right? That's probably not as – or it's not. It's not as good as what I expected it to be. It's, but on the flip side, it's it's not awful at all, all right? So don't take take me saying that it's 5.0. It's good. It's just not where I thought it would be good. Uh, will this pass defense get better or worse – during the second half of the season versus versus what they have lined up on the schedule. I would hope it gets a little bit better. Maybe you're not facing as many quality passing offenses. Maybe you're not blowing as many coverages, but it is just so hard to play pass defense in today's NFL. I mean, offenses are just too good. Quarterbacks are too good. The rules are 
tipping the scales in favor of the offense. I mean, it's just it's just a tough life to be a DB in to, uh, today's NFL. Will it be better or worse than 5.01 during the second half of the season? I'll say slightly better. Okay. If it does, then you're going to have a good shot at obviously running the table or, or only losing one game. Yeah, Terry Bradshaw predicted undefeated mm-hmm. Steelers last night, didn't he? Yeah, Lord so. knows we all wait for what he has to say about <laughs> I like Terry. He's, he's fun. He's a uh, long, long story short, I, I think there's room for improvement in the pass defense. I expect improvement in the pass defense uh, there, and the number's already not bad. Uh, number two, the, the adjusted – the offensive number, 6.74 – uh, the number damn sure shouldn't go backwards. If they can hold that number, they'll be fine. Okay. Uh, I would like to see that number around, uh, around seven though. And some of those big plays that hopefully hit on, we'll, we'll put that number in the right direction. Right. 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 All right. So good. So when, when's the next update? Three quarters of the season. Yeah. Let's, let's the, uh, do it after week 10. Pe- people tired of me talking about it. I'm sure. So. All right, Dave, well, let's get to our week 10 picks then and see what's going on this week. All right, let's do it. Uh, we both obviously hit, or no, I hit no, last night. You, you didn't. Mm-hmm. I'm over one for the week. All right, uh, how are we on time here? Uh, we got time. About an hour and a half in. All right, uh, Houston Texans at the Cleveland Browns. Uh, the Cleveland Browns at home, favored by four. Oh man, no Odell Beckham Jr. They're coming off what they're by Baker coming off of COVID. I'm gonna go with the Texans on this one. I know that they're bad, but I don't know. They're, they're fun bad. they got to go to quarterback. Uh, I'm going to take the Texans at home to blow out. I mean, uh, the Browns at home to, to blow out the Texans. I'll lay the four points. Jacksonville Jaguars at Green Bay Packers. 13 and a half points. Mm. Packers at home favored. Is Minshew mania starting or is Luton mania? If they're calling it that starting. I don't know who the quarterback for Jacksonville this week is going to be. I'm going to say. I'm going to say the Jags find a way to cover this one. I'll go with Packers laying that big number 13 and a half at home. Philadelphia Eagles at the New York football Giants. Uh, Eagles road favorites. The Giants getting three and a half here. That's going to be an ugly game. Yeah, give me the Eagles. I'll take the Giants to cover this at home. Give me the three and a half points. Uh, be a big week for us going in different directions. Yeah, well, let's see. Uh, Tampa Bay at Carolina. Tampa Bay coming off that slacking against the Saints. Uh, Buccaneers favorite on the road by six. Panthers getting six at home. Yeah, give me the Bucks to bounce back. I mean, they're going to use that anger from last week and, and I think uh, take it to the Panthers. I'll take the Buccaneers on the road, laying the six as well, too. Denver Broncos uh, in Vegas against the Raiders. The Raiders laying four and a half. Yeah, I like the Raiders in this one. I just like the Raiders overall. I think they're an impressive team. You think they're an underrated team or no? I do. I haven't been singing their praises all year. And, um, yeah, I'm going to go with, with Las Vegas. Boy, if they lose this one, whew, uh, I'll, I'll take the Raiders late a four and a half at home. Buffalo Bills on the road against the Arizona Cardinals. The Cardinals are one of those teams, too, that just barely missed making the list. Uh, they would have been kind of a, a night team. I think their they're, they're defensive number is just a tad too high there. Uh, that said, Cardinals are laying two and a half at home against the Buffalo Bills. What say you? Mm-hmm. This is a this is a this is a one of those adjusted net yards for passing attempt measurement st- uh, games right here. What did the Bills rank in in that stat? Uh, hey, oh. not in the they uh, they ranked uh, below the Cardinals actually. Really? That's yeah, surprising. the Cardinals have a differential of 1.08. The Bills, their defense is what's holding them back. They're 0.84 for the Bills, and the Cardinals 1.08. Technically, on paper in this stat, the Cardinals are a better team. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the Bills' defense, surprised how much of a step back they've taken. I'm going to give the slight edge to the Cardinals at home, but uh, I think this will be a really good game. Uh I'm not sure. I think the, if the Cardinals win, I'm not convinced they win it by the, by by the by the two and a half there. You know what? No way. I I take that back. I, they'll win it by a field goal, so they'll cover. Give give me the Cardinals late at two and a half points here. Uh, how about that for a flip flop there? Uh, <laughs> Chargers on the road against the Dolphins. Who are the Dolphins? Uh, are we really going to find out against the Chargers? They're at home. They're favored by a point and a half. What's going to happen? Yeah, Dolphins seem like they're they're. For real, I mean, relatively speaking, and the Chargers, they just find ways to lose. I mean, I think they're getting Eckler back, and I like Herbert a whole lot. Big fan of Keenan Allen, but uh, I'm going to go Miami in this one. 
I'll go to the other side. I'll go to Chargers up, set them in, 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 in Miami here. So I want that point and a half. Seattle Seahawks at the uh, uh, Rams. Uh, I want to see. I want to. I, I, it's not going to happen because I don't think uh, uh, Ramsey travels. Uh, but uh, uh, Metcalf versus Ramsey all game would be worth the price of a mission, would it not? Yeah, this one could be a shootout in which defense is going to make the play. I like the Rams' defense a little bit better. The Seahawks are just really rough defensively. Uh, I'm going to go with the Rams. And the Rams are laying a point and a half, so you're fine by that. Uh, uh, I Rams are on that list. They're they're on you know uh, they're on my adjusted net yards for passing attempt. This will be a measurement game here for them as well too. Russell, oh, get back to the point that I was going to make on third down. Russell Wilson's just horrible on third down Is this he? year. Yeah, really? Yeah, that surprises me. Yeah, uh, that might be the difference in this game. Give you the Rams late a point and a half in this. He has something like a two point something adjusted net yards for passing attempt number uh, on third down. Russell Wilson does this but year, but he's been so good this year. How is he struggling that bad on third down? Or maybe he's not as good as I think he is. Yeah, right. I don't know. I, I haven't dove down to, to to match up the tape with it. You know, but it definitely stuck out from a statistical aspect. Thirtieth yeah, uh, ranked offense overall. That surprises. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and the, let, fir- and the let, best let, let Russell cook, right? Or how's it go? Yeah. <laughs> what's let, what's Russ the cook. saying? Let, let, let Russ, Russ cook. cook. Uh, how about 49ers on the road at the Saints? Uh, 49ers missing some bodies. Saints coming off that big win. Oh, this has got to be a trap game, right? Minus, <laughs> uh, Saints minus 10. Yeah, I mean, the 49ers, just just every guy's hurt imaginable, including your boy George Kittle. Uh, give me the Saints. I think the Saints win this, but I don't think they cover. Give me the 49ers plus the 10 points. What's going to happen in this one? Baltimore Ravens at the New England Patriots. Patriots home dog by seven and a half points. What do you think about ah. Lamar Jackson's play? What do you who's Joe? Who's Lamar Jackson right now? Yeah, I think they're asking themselves not only about Lamar Jackson, but just the offense conceptually. There's been a lot of good articles, I think, by Chris Brown and others about how Greg Roman's offense has kind of been a little predictable, a little easy to figure out. There's some tendencies and keys that defenses are picking up on. But just from a talent standpoint and how much the Patriots have struggled, I mean, you barely beat the Jets last week. I know Belichick is as smart as anyone defensively. Give me the Ravens in this one. Who are are you are you what are you are you paying Lamar Jackson? The, the mega uh, money, you almost have, yeah, you, yeah, you almost have yeah. you almost have to though, right? Yeah, well, you can do let him walk and try to find the next Lamar Jackson right. in the draft. Yeah, you're gonna pay him. How nervous are you paying him though? I don't know. I I'm not too nervous about it. I am. I am. But you would still I pay am. him. I think you have to, but I would be careful. And there's no uh, there's no being careful about it because yeah, I was gonna say I don't know how you'd be careful yeah. about that and pay a guy. He, he, I mean, he's, he's gonna get what he's gonna get. You know, right. as far as guaranteed, uh, I I would be uneasy about it. Though I I, I will have ulcers about it. Uh, I'm let me put it to you this way: from what I've seen, what do you think about his? What do you think about about Lamar Jackson's comments? Uh, in regards to what the offense being predictable? Yeah, people calling things out, predictable, blah blah blah. I'm sure it's not. It's stuff I'm sure they've talked about internally, and so I don't think it's news to to the coaching staff. So I was okay with it. Uh, if Ben made comments like that, boy, the damn Twitter would be burnt to the ground, be burnt to a crisp. So uh, you're that shaky on Lamar? On, on a scale of first Jenga piece to last Jenga piece, you're on like last Jenga piece nervousness? I'm on a second to last. Uh, I'm trying to punch out the pieces right now. Mm. You're trying to do that uh, thing the, and trying to like. I, I'm, I'm not. Slowly. And I've, I've, I've kind of said this. Have I not about the, about him you all have, the way? Yeah. yeah. You've been more skeptical than I. Uh, I'm, I'm. I'm, the flashing lights on. I'm worried about Lamar Jackson. I think he's an incredible athlete. Don't get me wrong, but I think once teams start start defending some of this stuff, I think a lot of what they do is predicated off the running game. And sure, it, it is. And, and if you're not able to have the running game there, I kind of wonder about that kid. And if you get him down on the scoreboard, I kind of wonder about him. And we've sort of seen that. So. I'm not. I'm not convinced that that he's that guy, Alex. I'm, I'm really I, not. I think if you just add some more schematic wrinkles and you bring in another receiver, I think you you get this offense back on track. And they're still what six and two. Yeah, I'm like, I don't. I don't think he's. I don't think he's that heady quarterback either. I don't think he's going to kill you, uh, X's and O's wise, figuring you out either. 
I think yeah. that's where he's. I think I think he's going to run into problems. Right? Look, he's got an arm. He he can make passes. Blah blah blah. I just the whole package, man. Put put me down. Put me down from three years from now, wondering where where Lamar Jackson is. But you're still paying. I, I don't think you have. You're, you're I, glad you don't have to pay him. I'm personally. glad. I I I think you have to pay him. But I I would not want to be in that GM chair. You're the uh, gif of that guy putting the lobster in the boiling water. Right, right, here. right, right. Exactly. <laughs> uh, give me the Patriots plus the seven and a half points. That's a Ooh. long way of saying that. Uh, Minnes- <laughs> they, they couldn't. They barely beat the Jets. I'm Adam just Gates saying. Right. I'm just saying. I hope you're right. Uh, Minnes- I, I, look, I'm not saying the Patriots win this, but uh, mm-hmm. I, w- I want that seven and a half. Minnesota Vikings at the Chicago Bears. This ought to be a pretty entertaining game. Uh, Bears at home plus three. Yeah, I think it's going to be good. Davin Cook's been running so well, but the Bears do have a good defense. Um, I don't know where I want to go here. You pick it first. I'll make you choose this one. Uh, give me the uh, give me the Vikings lay the three on the road. Uh, right. Just schematically, defensively, they just I think match up a uh, a uh, uh, a lot better. I think Zim's going to have something for him there. Yeah, give me the Vikings too. I think that brings us to, unless there's any other uh, uh, games off the board, which it looks like with my bookie right now, the Steelers game is off the board, which isn't uh, too surprising. So we'll have to use uh, some other lines here. And the line all week with this game is pretty much con- uh, consensus uh, seven and a half Steelers favored at home. What you got for me? Uh, I got to give credit to the Bengals. Again, I don't want to underestimate them. They are a pretty good, so to speak, funny to say, two, five, and one team. I think this game can be close. I think the Bengals can, can move the football a little bit, and I want to see the Steelers' run defense improve, obviously. Ultimately, though, long story short, I have the Steelers winning this one. I think the offense sputters a bit because of the lack of practice reps for Ben and just the offense just not always being as crisp and clean and as efficient. But uh, I have Pittsburgh winning this one 26-17. to 17. Okay. Uh, you want to talk about where the term trap games come in? It's a trap game because of the way the odds have you set up. They, the Vegas is trying to set you a trap here uh, because of how Steelers have kind of played down, you know, quote unquote, and, 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 and them against, you know, the spread against teams on, uh, against lesser competitive teams and not covering and yada, yada. Uh, there's no reason for the Steelers not to blow out the Bengals in this game. And thus cover that seven and a half. I think they're more than going to cover cover this spread. Uh, I, I respect what Cincinnati has done, but this is still a rookie quarterback coming to play uh, a, a, a very good Steelers defense in this one. They're beat up offensively. Uh, this thing, the, the you know the old uh, the old Dukes of uh, Hazard uh, car chase. All right, cop chase. Uh, uh, you go the, the, once 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 Roscoe P. Coltrane goes over that hub, goes over the uh, the railroad tracks at one time. He's going to lose one of them hubcaps, and then the, all the wheels just going to completely going to come off at that at that point uh oddball score in this one Steelers cover by 20 32 to 12 mm. Mm. oh that is not is that score got me i don't know if that score got me or not is it 32 to 12 how'd you come up with that one yeah there's gonna be there's gonna be uh there's gonna be a little bit of everything in this game in or this safeties something there might like. be a safety in this one yeah there might Rocky. be a there might be a block block kick kick touchdown. We haven't had one of those for a while. Uh, there's no reason for them not to blow them out in this game, Alex. It's good. Uh, the things that we talked about too. You know, we should, if we're if we're having to talk about a Cincinnati team running for 140 yards with the running backs, uh, we we we're gonna have to have a talk there. Uh, having a rookie quarterback dissect you on third down. Uh, should not happen in this game either. Uh, the whole COVID thing with Ben, all of this obviously assumes Ben Ben plays. You know, uh, mm-hmm. I, I'm not I'm not worried about that that aspect of. It. They should they should come out and really carve this carve this defense up. This should be a get better game. Nine and those Steelers, thirty two twelve. There's never been a thirty two twelve game in NFL history, so that there would be go. score gone. So. If I hit this, I'm, I'm mon- monumental. Uh, uh, level here, but that that, that yeah. that's what comes in my head here. Thirty two twelve. All right, I like it. All right, Dave, let's get to some reader emails and close out today's show. Probably ain't got time for a lot of them, but we'll get what we uh, what we can here real, real quick. Uh, Jordan Riser, hey guys, uh, from small town Norfolk, 
Nebraska. Wow, never heard of Norfolk, Nebraska. Glad he has written in from Norfolk, Nebraska. First time sending in a question. Love the podcast. You do great work and keep me awake while I'm working or working out. My question is that uh, if the Steelers were to only lose one game this year, looking at the remaining opponents on the schedule, who would you be most comfortable giving one up to? Do you think Anthony McFarlane Jr. can be the pass-catching two-minute offense running back by the end of the season? Good questions, Jordan. Uh, to McFarland, the latter, no, I don't trust him as much as a receiver or in pass pro. Who would I be willing to lose to? Uh, that's always a difficult question to answer. I got a good one. Um, I mean, you could say just Washington because of the NFC team, and it's not going to hurt you and sort of some sort of AFC playoff picture. But what, what's your answer? Uh, the Colts. Why, why the Colts? I, I, and I'm not that I'm okay, but I, that, that game jumps out for them to be able to lose right now. And B, if you're going to have a 15 to one Steelers team, that game jumps out. In the in the sense of that's the one they're most likely to lose, or the one you're okay with them losing. Oh uh, no, I'm not. I mean, obviously not okay with, with it. Oh well, yeah. You know, obviously, obviously, is that what he's asking? If they only lose well, one uh, game this year, looking at the remaining, who would you be most comfortable right. giving one up to? Okay, uh, yeah, it would be. Uh, uh, the the, the Redskins. I mean, not the Redskins. The Washington Football Team are the only team left. Uh, NFC, right? Yeah, they're the only NFC team left. So I guess that's where I would first go. I mean, Jacksonville, if you lost to Jacksonville on the road, I guess it wouldn't wouldn't ruin your season. Right. But uh, you could also just say, well, lose the Week 17 against Cleveland if that game means nothing. But uh, it's hard to be comfortable about any loss. I don't prefer <laughs> any sort of uh, loss. Or right. I, I think most likely would be, be obviously the Ravens or the Colts. In terms of likelihood of loss? Right. Yeah, sure. sure. Uh, or the Bills. Bills. Bills play them tough, too. That's true. Uh, let's see. Uh, Chris Bailey, great work by you and the rest of the Steelers Depot team. I particularly like the advanced analytics work from Brad. What a job Brad's doing, huh, Alex? Mm-hmm. Doing a great job. I had a post yesterday on Ben. Really good feedback on that one. Uh, the thing, too, is I've always been fascinated by that uh, scraper, you know, that the NFL scraper and all. And I haven't had time to, to sit and play with that myself to, 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 to unlock. And, and Brad's obviously good with, uh, uh, with that program and all like that. So we kind of get the best of both worlds. And uh, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm a stats nerd. I think you are to some degree. And I think that really fits in perfectly with, uh, with, with the Steelers Depot crew. So Brad, keep up the good work there. Uh, my question is one I've been thinking about for a while concerning the evolution of the Steelers defensive bias between man and zone over the last decade or so. I know it's always a mix during any given game, but please hear me out. Until a couple years ago, the quarterbacks we needed to, to uh, defend against uh, to win our division and conference were, were the likes of Flacco, Dalton, Brady, and Manning. The best way to defend them was to, to was to be more man, but we lacked the personnel to do this effectively, so we finally get, get the personnel, and now the quarterbacks are Jackson, Mayfield, Burrow, uh, Mahomes and Allen, and we should be more zone against them, but our D is more suited to man. Is our defense one step behind what the rest of the league is throwing at them, or, or am I missing something? Uh, and that's from Chris from East Sussex, England. So what do you think about uh, they just run behind the trend of, uh, of, 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 of of having a more zone defense when they should be able to play man and vice versa? Yeah, I mean, it's kind of true. I, I hear you, Chris. We're talking about all these mobile quarterbacks and how much you're going to play zone, and, and you hear me talk about it all the time. Oh, man, this team's not as equipped, not as strong with their zone coverage as they are playing man. And so it is kind of funny how, how that works out. I think you're right about that. But bottom line is they have a more talented secondary. They've invested heavily in it. So even though you're not as strong in zone uh, as you are man, you're still a, a good secondary overall with a lot of talent, and, and that's still going to help you against these elite quarterbacks. And you know, pass rush and coverage go hand in hand. People hate hearing that cliche, but it's the damn truth. And let me tell you, give me a good pass. If I have to choose first and foremost, give me the pass rush. Give me the ability to get pressure with four guys versus five or sometimes three. Uh, I'll, I'll take, I'll take being uh, behind the eight ball on, on the rest of it. I know that sounds funny, but uh, you're going to get a, in today's NFL. You're going to get sk- out schemed. Okay, give me a team that can get after the quarterback or defense. and one that takes and one that takes the football away and, and one that takes two-fold. right. And, and uh, look, uh, it's going to be interesting. You get into the playoffs, and especially if you're facing a guy like Patrick Mahomes. You better be able to play some 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 aspect of zone because that's that's the thing that 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 hurts him the most is zone against Mahomes. Mm-hmm. Yep, for sure. I think that's kind of been proven there. 
Uh, injuries in the NFL. This one from uh, Chris3610. Uh, as I'm watching the Tennessee Indy game, they are talking about T.Y. Hilton's groin injury. Insert Dave's joke here. Uh, <laughs> my question, at what percentage do you think injured NFL players deem themselves healthy enough to play? I know doctors are involved, but do you think it's 80%, 90 five percent hundred percent for example ty is giving it a go isn't the possibility of re-injury and and missing a larger chunk of time a real fear i feel the Steelers always err on the side of caution and wait until close to 100 percent unless it's been lol i'm glad they had this philosophy by the way keep up superb work alex and dave no one and i mean no one does the Steelers like you and your crew thanks for that chris uh I have no clue. It's, it's something that we, next time we have Charlie Batch, uh, 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 Chris Hoke, uh, some of these athletes I need to ask. Yeah, it's a good question. I'm sure it varies case by case, injury by injury, team by team. Obviously, there's a pain tolerance factor too. So just how much pain can you can you endure and, and how much will the injury limit you in terms of mobility and, and football-related things you have to do. So hard to dial down an answer, but obviously a lot of these guys are playing through some sort of ailment and they take some painkillers or – they just get through it, and that's just the nature of the game, nature of the sport. Uh, Gary writes in, did you know that the 1963 NFL draft, the Steelers' first selection, was not made until round eight? No wonder I suffered so much in my younger days, Gary says. Uh, Andy Russell was a was a 16th round pick, and I still think he's a Hall of Famer. So glad he lasted for at least two Super Bowl rings. Of a possible 20 potential selections in the 1963 draft, the Steelers drafted 13 players whom – of whom only five wore the black and gold, ones who ones who got eventually away. Uh, Harrett, Dixon, and Bill Nelson. We uh, Bill Nelson passed away not too terribly long ago, quarterback, right? Uh, mm-hmm. uh, and I'll uh, Herwitt Dixon. I'm going to have to research that one there. Uh, the only other 1963 draftee worth noting was the disgraced former congressman Jim Trafficant, who was drafted out of Pitt in the 20th round. I'm going to have to have to research that. Uh, thanks for that information, Gary. Buddy Parker, hated rookies, traded he, away draft picks. He loved picks, trade, so. trader. He did not believe in the draft, did he? Nope, he did not. And so that's why they would pick until – that happened a couple of drafts where they weren't picking for like several rounds. Seventh, eighth round would be the first pick. Uh, Bryce writes in, Bungles Week. Hey, guys, uh, can't wait to get to uh, uh, Burl's Bungles this week. Some thoughts. Uh, at the midway point, which Steeler player is the biggest surprise for you in terms of their success on the field, and which player is the biggest dis- disappointment? Um, yeah, I've been asked this question or a version of it a couple times. I think, obviously, defensively, uh, Tyson Alualu just finding the fountain of youth. You, you thought he would, would hold his own as a run defender, but he's just been above and beyond all my expectations. Been impressed with the rookie class overall, Claypool, Dotson, Highsmith. Uh, biggest disappointment? Mm, disappointment. That, that's harder to come up on, on an 8 no team. What would you <laughs> lean on disappointment, Dave? I don't know. Uh, biggest surprise was just Claypool – integrating it making as big of an impact and playing as much as he's had so so far uh uh tice dalu Alu on the defensive side of the ball no question about it uh biggest disappointment man oh man i mean i thought i would see more steven from nelson no. I yeah i was know. thinking nelson but i just think it just and that's not bad so- it's just right I, I, I might lean Snell just because I thought we would see some more. Obviously, Connor has been healthy. He's the feature guy, so there's only so much there for, for Snell to work with, and I think he's done a good job on special teams. Um, Dustin Quoker was a big disappointment in his short time in Pittsburgh, but, yeah, it's hard to come up with, with one name because they're right now and they're playing pretty well. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, I don't know if I'd argue with with, 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 with any of what you just said there for sure. Uh, but we're talking about eight no team here. Uh, from what you've seen on tape, how good of a running back is Joe Mix- Mixon? How do you rank him compared to the other top backs in the league? He's a really good back. I mean, he's had some really tough offensive lines to try to run behind and had some health issues. But I think he's a really talented back. I mean, he's probably he's definitely top ten for me. I mean, there are some obviously excellent backs in football. Um, so I don't know exactly where I would rank him, but he's easily top ten. He can get around that edge, man. Mm-hmm. You know, if he can get out on the edge on you, I don't know, top six, seven, right around in there. Uh, it's obviously early, guys. We're looking at the roster from potential free agency. If the draft was tomorrow, I would uh, I would go draft in this order. Left tackle or slash best off offensive line, uh, tight end, 
corner, inside linebacker, defensive tackle, outside linebacker, running back. Do you agree with this order? Uh, I don't agree with any order right now. I mean, other than just saying, like, I, I think tight end has a ability to be up there. Uh, I think offensive line has the ability to, to be up there. Uh, uh, what would what would the order of your draft be? I don't have one. How's that? Check my mailbag from yesterday. I answered a, a very rough outline of a draft order with comp picks and a little free agency speculation. So you can check that out on Steelers Depot. I mean, be honest with you, I don't care right now. Uh, I went tackle in the first round, by the way. I went offensive tackle. Uh, and I could definitely see that. Uh, let's see here. I think we're. And that was working under the assumption that Bill Noyable was gone in the uh, in the response I gave in my mailback. Uh, let me try to get to one other one over here. Backup and emergency. I think we already hit that. Uh. Yeah, you know, this is a good uh, fourth down conversion. Do we hit this? Uh, Garrett, Garrett Goldberg. Hey, guys, Garrett from Western New York. Uh, my question is about strategy for converting crucial third or fourth down short yard situations. I know the game flow, field position, etc., determines a lot of play calling in situations like these. Uh, but if you guys put your OC hats on, what would what would be your go to short yardage play? Say, for example, on, on on a failed fourth down conversion at the end of the end of the game last week. It seems like you guys might have chosen something other than power to try to convert that. Anyway, love the site and all the guys, all the work you guys do. Uh, I'd like to take my hat off and hand it to you, but it's covered in minutiae, unfortunately. There you go, mm-hmm. Garrett. Uh, peace and love, he says. Peace and love to you, Garrett. Uh, what's your go-to play, fourth and short? Man, I know they didn't have Derek Watt, a fullback available, but you could put Mondo, you could put Vance in the backfield, or just run lead strong and just, just barrel ahead with, with Snell or Connor. That would have been my, my game plan. Uh, either that or some sort of uh, lineup, uh, uh, Claypool uh, lineup in that in that uh, in that uh, heavy heavy look. Uh, Clay, run that play that you ran to James Conner in the end zone that he dropped. Oh, the little boot to the right. Right. Yeah, I don't know if I was going to have Ben roll out on that knee, but but yeah, that would that would have been unexpected for sure. Oh, you just asked me. I, I you didn't give me uh, injury uh, status updates there. I, yeah, <laughs> fair enough. I just assume Ben's knee is always always hurting. Uh, let's he knows see. when it rains. Ben knows when it rains. Uh, His knees tell him. We're we're at the two hour mark there, so I guess it's uh, and I got to go to the bathroom. I'm not feeling too great today. So uh, with that, uh, have we got to everything? Yeah, we'll come back Monday and talk about the Bengals game. Uh, hopefully we're talking about a 9-0 and team and a, and a Steelers blowout uh, here. So uh, in the meantime, uh, let's see. You can follow me on the Twitter machine at Steelers Depot. You can follow Alex on Twitter at Alex Kazor, underscore Kazora. Follow the show at Terrible Podcast. Email the show, theterriblepodcast at gmail.com. If you like what we do and you want to donate to the cause, please go to SteedersDepot.com and hit the donate button up right navigational bar. Uh, if you want an ad free version of the site, go to SteedersDepot.com, hit the uh, 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 ad free button, uh, get signed up for $25 for one calendar year. You can have an ad free version of SteedersDepot.com. Apologies if we have not gotten to your questions. We've gotten so many of them, and obviously we get to the end of the show. We run long, we just can't read all of them if we miss something and you think it's still pertinent send it again and get it back in 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 in, in, you know the order again and all like that we'll try to get to it there so uh with that we appreciate all love and support Uh, everybody's been giving us uh we'll get back after it on monday alex and i and and until then as always thanks for listening to the terrible podcast with dave and alex